have a young boy at the age of five. My mother's child will be the greatest man alive. season record awaits next on Fox over the weekend we promised you that tonight history would be made either the king of the hill in network television or the king of the hill in Major League Baseball and right now all of sports McGuire mania and we welcome you to St. Louis Missouri for one of the monumental events in the history of sports is tonight the Chicago Cubs take on the St. Louis Cardinals Welcome to the broadcast booth everybody we welcome those of you watching on the Fox Sports Network and those of you tuning us in on Fox Sports Midwest I'm Joe Buck along with Bob Brenly and Tim McCarver and Tim we've had a chance lately to track this home run race it has been nothing but a pleasure it has been historic something that we'll never forget you're a guy that played with Roger Maris uh, I wonder about your thoughts as now McGuire has 61 he is only one away from becoming the new single season home run champion Yeah, Joe I played with Roger Maris back in 1967 and 68 with the Cardinals his last two years in baseball and Roger Maris at that time was not the prolific home run hitter that he was in the early 60s but it's hard to believe when you pick up a stat sheet on September 8th and you read Mark McGuire 136 games 53 singles and 61 home runs now, a home run has always been indelibly inscribed in our language I mean, after all, you do have a good day on the stock market, you've hit a home run. If you're Bruce Springsteen, you release a new CD, obviously you hit a home run. If Mark McGuire hits a home run tonight, St. Louis, the gateway to the West, will become the gateway of the best. Well, it has uh, truly been a remarkable season. And uh, Bob Brenly, I talked to a lot of guys who were around Roger Maris at the time. He was doing what he did in 1961, hitting the 61 home runs. And they talked about the media intensity and the scrutiny and they said once McGuire gets close he's going to buckle under well I submit to you <laughs> as he's gotten closer he's had more and more fun it seems like the more home runs he hits the better he enjoys it and why not McGuire said all along that he didn't really concern himself too much with the record until somebody got to 50 by the first of September he hit his 50th on August 20th so everything else is gravy from that point on. I mean, the media circus surrounding this chase has just been unbelievable. McGuire and Sosa both have handled it like true champions with a lot of dignity and respect for the game. Well, if you don't believe him about that, watch this. Just moments ago, I sat down with both Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, two very relaxed, two very talented individuals. Does it in any way feel like there's been this predetermined script your son Matt just gets here it's your dad's birthday at 61 now you've got a night to think about it the world's had a night to think about it it's your last night at home for a little while <laughs> I mean it's crazy the way this thing's unfolding isn't it you're right you know it's it's been like a fairy tale script third person in history hit 60 Babe Ruth for number three I hit it on the third pitch and then yesterday my father's 61st birthday hit my 61st home run so um, if I'm lucky enough tonight to do it, it's, uh, it's for the best fans in the game of baseball, St. Louis fans. Have you learned anything from watching Sammy and the way that he's dealt with everything? To be honest with you, I think uh, America's caught on with it. And 
and they see how excited he is and how excited I am, and we're having fun doing it. And I think America's having fun. Everybody's watching. And it, it excites me, and I'm sure it excites you. And, and then, you know, yesterday I've seen highlights of the press conference. People are like, look at these two guys. You know, they're competitors, and uh, it's unusual that they're having fun. It's unusual. What do you mean? We're two human beings enjoying what we're doing, and they see what kind of person it is. They see what kind of person I am, and there you have it. Along those lines, Sammy, I've had a hundred comments to me. The neatest part about yesterday when Mac hit the home run was the shot of you in the outfield kind of giving it the fist pump. You truly were happy for him to hit the 61st, weren't you? Definitely. I think that yesterday was uh, one of the great moments that I had to say that um, uh, Mark, um, everybody was waiting for that swing. And when he connect, it was like, um, you know, my heart was one like the couple of times, and I mean, I mean it. This is something that I'm, I'm never going to forget, and I won't like, yes, you know, but I cannot show up too much <laughs> because, I mean, <laughs> but really, really, I was uh, real happy. Along those lines, how special would it be to, to, uh, to do it tonight with, with Sammy out in right field? It would be, it'd be incredible. Like we're talking about, it would be storybook, and um, I mean, I have the utmost respect for this man right here. I mean, it's just... I mean, I don't think people even begin to know what he and I have been going through. And I, and I don't know, I mean, I know what I'm going through and I know what he's going through, but to really sit down and let everything sink in. And if it was God willing happen tonight, I'd almost want to run out and give you a big hug on the outfield, you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the same spot, I'd do the oh, same yeah. thing to you. Because oh, yeah. when he said, you know, he's doing this, if he's in this spot, and he could be, you know. You don't know. He might hit three or four tonight. You have no idea what will happen. Oh, yeah, I'll coming. be the first one to do this. And I'm coming. <laughs> well, you're coming. I know you are. I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. Does that, does that bother you at all? I mean, you're only three behind this guy. Yet, no. Uh, well, one thing that I like it is that um, every time Mark go to the home plate and he won, or I saw Mark in TV, he won. It's motivating me. He drives me. I drive him. But you know what? It's the game of baseball. And... He's been what a very, beautiful, very, very, very good, good to me. <laughs> He's only one curtain call away. Perhaps, folks, a glimpse of history tonight on Fox. We'll return to St. Louis after this from your home of the 1998 World Series, your local Fox station. I'm Christine Devine. Tonight, Jeremy Strawmeyer's dramatic courtroom admission in the casino killing of seven-year-old Sharice Iverson. That story on Fox 11 News after the game. When you eat a big, juicy Carl's Jr. Superstar, remember, things can get a little dirty. If it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't belong in your face. I told Jack to go see Kevin if you wanted a deal on a Mercedes. Oh, I might let slip to jail that Sybil said this Kevin guy would do a killer deal. Well, Jack says that Kevin will do less than 32 grand on a new C-Class. No. Kevin? Don't tell me. Sybil sent you? She said you could do this. For under 32 grand, that's right. But keep it to yourself, okay? See, it's not what you know, it's who you know. California has a real choice for governor this year. Dan Lundgren, native Californian, loving husband and father, experience cutting taxes and improving education in Congress, enforcing the death penalty, fighting for three strikes, and confirming tough judges as attorney general. No wonder thousands of police chiefs, sheriffs, and cops on the beat endorse Dan Lundgren for governor. We've made a difference in this state, but we can do so much more. Dan Lundgren, a governor we can trust. I get it, you're like this Hemingway type who like sold out to Hollywood. Jerry, I can get you a job. I know the producers. She was beautiful, she was witty, and she had no idea who I really was. You're always late, you're erratic. I know this looks bad, but it's right. It's worse than it seems. Get out! Whoa, 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 whoa! You're now obligated to stand here and give me five minutes. <laughs> Permanent Midnight, rated R. You're coming back, right? Hey, man, don't have a car. Catch The Simpsons tonight at 8.30 on Fox 11. 
Welcome back to St. Louis, Missouri. Right now, it is the center of the sporting world. And, well, as we give you tonight's game, we preempt what would normally happen this night. Primetime lineup. Season premiere of King of the Hill. Then see why Sue is the breakout personality of the new season on the series premiere of Costello before an all-new Guinness. It's Fox Tuesday starting next week at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. And we invite you to tune in for that. Drop one on them early, Brenly. I'll tell you what, Bobby. <laughs> I don't mind getting bumped for a ball game, Bobby. Especially a ball game like this, Hank. <laughs> And we're glad that you folks are with us, and uh, hopefully before the end of the night, you'll be glad that you're with us, too. One observation. Kent Merker usually cracks Big Mac's back before he goes out on the field. Well, with Merker pitching tonight, who's going to crack his back? It's a good question. It may take several players to crack Mac's back. It usually takes more than one to lift that body off the turf. As we get ready for baseball here in St. Louis, Kent Merker heads to work. And a look for you at the MCI starting lineup for the Chicago Cubs. Not just the starting lineup, but the role players in this drama that unfolds before us here tonight for the Cubs. Jim Riggleman has Lance Johnson in center. Jose Hernandez batting second at shortstop. Mark Grace hitting third at first base. We've already focused on McGuire. Don't forget, Sammy Sosa's only three home runs away from McGuire with 58. Glenn Allen Hill is in left field with Gary Gaetti, the former Cardinal at third, Mickey Morandini at second, Scott Service is hitting eighth and catching and pitching. The man on the mound, Steve Traxel, will his name be indelibly marked in our memories after tonight's effort. The Cardinals defense, Mark McGuire, don't forget, an American League Gold Glove Award winner at first base with Oakland back in 1990. And the man to his right on the mound tonight for the Cardinals, left-hander, 30-year-old Kent Merker. Take a look at Merker's numbers on this season. Basically, a, a two different fastball pitcher. He'll cut one in on the right-handers. He'll sink it away from the right-handers. The best pitch for my money is that straight changeup. Of course, he needs to set it up with those two fastballs I mentioned earlier. Very nice changeup with good arm speed that will fade down and away from the hitters. He'll mix in an occasional breaking ball. Very important for Merker to keep the ball down in the game. Unless he's pitching to Sammy Sosa. As a matter of fact, either pitcher tonight, when they face Sosa and McGuire, you do not want to keep that ball down to them. A couple of golfers as hitters. Now Mark McGuire, in fact, one year in high school, quit the game of baseball to play golf. And you wonder what might have been had he continued down that path. But the former pitcher in high school and at USC is now on the verge of becoming the heavyweight champion of baseball, the single season home run king. This broadcast is also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. Glad you're with us. Maybe history tonight as Kent Merker gets ready to work to Lance Johnson with Jose Hernandez and Mark Grace to follow. And the first pitch of the night is pop foul. Back and out of play for strike one. The home plate umpire, Steve Ripley. He's the man in charge of calling balls and strikes tonight with Larry Poncino at first, Mike Winters at second, Gary Darling at third. Bob, these guys have been here uh, for the entire weekend, and now the next two days, that's not a bad assignment for the men in blue to come to St. Louis for this long five-game stand. Well, we talked about how excited the players are to be involved in this thing, the fans that were able to get tickets to come out here to Bush Stadium tonight, and it's a big thrill for the umpires as well. One ball, one strike, and Johnson grounds it foul outside first for strike two. Tim, what can't be lost in the shuffle as we look at McGuire and track his progress and give you his history throughout the night this evening on Fox is that that man on your right, Jim Riggleman, and the man to his left, Sammy Sosa, heavily involved in the postseason race. They come into tonight's game tied with the New York Mets atop the National League wildcard race. It would be a lot easier for some of Jim Riggleman's decisions if the Cubs were in the same position as the Cardinals out of the race. Johnson pops it into left center. Lankford over to get it to his right. One up, one down for the Cubs in the first. Well, there are the standings with the Mets and Cubs with identical records of 80 and 64. And the Giants, Bob, a former Giant, they will not go away. And I think that's a credit to a guy who I think is one of the best, if not the best managers in the game and that's Dusty Baker. Oh, regardless of the 
the adversity the Giants have faced this year. They're just hanging around in that wild card race. They got left-hander Sean Estes back last week. Figures to get three or four more starts down the stretch. You can't count the Giants out yet. A ball up and away to Jose Hernandez, the number two hitter in the lineup for Jim Riggleman. Cubs hoping to get Jeff Blauser back tomorrow. He's had a problem with his throwing elbow. They get Henry Rodriguez back. He's had a bad ankle. Uh, but right now, this evening's lineup is the same as we had here yesterday on Labor Day when Mark McGuire hit number 61. That misses from Merker, and the count goes to 3 0. Tony LaRussa came back to St. Louis from Tampa about two hours before game time, is my understanding. He attended the funeral of his mother, Oliva, today. And his dad was okay, his 88 year old father, and Tony back in the dugout. He left after yesterday afternoon's game against the Cubs. And obviously, our condolences to the LaRusa family. Here is Mark Grace with one on, one out. And evidently, they announced the wrong hitter as Grace got in. <laughs> I think they may have said Sosa he got out and now they say it is Mark Grace at the plate so he gets a smile and so does Jim Riggleman. We talked about Sosa and McGuire and what fun they're having with this home run chase Mark Grace in batting practice today took his first round happened to hit one ball into bleachers in right field and ran around the bases in batting practice tipping his cap to the fans they gave him a good natured <laughs> round of applause everybody's getting into it. One on one out. One ball one strike well Mark Grace Tim yesterday when McGuire went deep and hit number 61 before Mark got away from him gave him a high five as McGuire went around first base gave him a little bash and that's dangerous to bash with that guy one and one and Grace takes a pitch in the dirt away from Marrero and back into the on deck circle that'll send Hernandez down to second on what will be a wild pitch. Breaking ball gets away from Eli Marrero and obviously in situations like this all night when you have first base open with Sosa on deck or with McGuire on deck there is going to be the question that has to be answered whether you're going to pitch to him or not. Two balls and a strike on Grace as he takes a high strike on a fastball from Merker 88 mile an hour pitch from the Cardinal left hander two and two. Tony La Russa trying to get the attention of somebody on his defense maybe the third baseman Tati says Merker just missed the outside corner three and two close pitch Mark Grace one of the better eyes in all of baseball about as borderline as it gets right there he must have real good eyes the three two from Merker right back up the middle and through into center field Hernandez will score without a play and here in the first inning the Cubs take a one to nothing lead. So with Grace at first and one out it brings in Sammy Sosa and so much has been made of the way these St. Louis fans have reacted to Sammy Sosa another standing ovation. Sosa yesterday when he got that in his first at bat tipped his helmet to the crowd here and was quoted as saying he was very touched as the flash bulbs pop. Wow. <laughs> it misses outside for ball one to Sosa. Pat Piper the public address announcer for years at Wrigley Field used to exhort to the Wrigley faithful to get your pencils and scorecards ready before the game. Sosa fouls it back one and one tonight it's get your flash bulbs ready before the game. Get ready to snap away. <laughs> Sammy Sosa, as we showed you. Anyway, maybe we'll get a look at all these flashbulbs popping around the ballpark. Sosa comes up empty. I mean, it's to the point where it's got to be somewhat distracting. Yeah, Absolutely. You would think so, yeah. yeah. Here's what Joe's been talking about. The flashbulbs start even before Merker begins his delivery as the pitch nears home plate. 
They all fire off those cameras at the same time. A ball and two strikes. Sosa takes it up and in. This kind of reminds me of growing up back in the Midwest, you know, a warm summer evening out in the middle of a field and all the lightning bugs flashing all around you. I thought you were going to say growing up in the 60s. Oh. Seeing all those flashes. <laughs> Here's the 2 2 pitch. Ground ball base hit left field to the left of Tatis. Sosa's aboard. He had a hit here yesterday and he's on with a base hit here in the first inning. And now McGuire and Sosa are near each other as they were yesterday and as they were for our pregame conversation. There is absolutely no phoniness. No. With regard to these two and how much they respect one another because they're going through something that they that they could probably never fully explain to anybody who hasn't lived through it. And aren't too many people that have lived through it. <laughs> two on one out and Glenn Allen Hill takes a pitch low and even fewer people that could handle it the way these two have. That's right. Glenn Allen Hill with two on one out and the 1 0 pitch is high 2 and 0 from Kent Merker who's getting deeper into trouble. Here it is yesterday with a home run number 61 off the bat of McGuire. There's the reaction from Sammy Sosa and then later when Sosa finally reached first the hug. The 2 0 pitch Hill a double play ball to short good play by Ordaz but they can get only one as he couldn't get it out of his glove. The force out at second Sosa's gone and it's first and third two out. That ball was hit so hard it shocked the system of Luis Ordaz. Great hands and finally gets one out. Looked like he had possession of that ball about four different times during the course of this play but never really had a good grip on it. Good presence of mind to stay with it and get the force out at second base. And now Gaetti with first and third two out another big ovation here yesterday and again tonight for Gary Gaetti who grew up just across the river in the state of Illinois but came to Cardinal games as a youngster in this area. He had been with the Cardinals for two plus years released by the Cardinals. He signs with the Cubs and he has been a big help to Chicago down the stretch hitting 284 as he lines a base hit into right field. Gray scores. Glenn Allen Hill will go first to third, and it's 2 0 Cubs here in the first. Gary Gaetti, perhaps more than any player on either team, understands the rivalry between these two organizations and these two cities. The Cardinals and the Cubs, the best in baseball, the best rivalry in baseball, in my judgment. Lining one to right field. The irony of having Sosa with the Cubs and McGuire with the Cardinals and these two organizations going at one another for all these years. And now Mickey Morandini. Sammy Sosa now over on the bench. His base hit helps produce that second run. As Morandini pops it into left field for Gant. Should do it for the top of the first and does. The Cubs come up with two runs on three hits bottom of the first that means McGuire two nothing Chicago is that then yep that's then Titanic guaranteed to be there at Blockbuster and you get a free limited edition print winner of 11 Academy Awards yours to treasure Yours to own. Now, take the voyage home on video cassette. Titanic. Guaranteed to be there at Blockbuster Video. Joan London for Claritin. In my line of work, you've got to be ready. Ready to hit your mark. That's why my doctor prescribed Claritin Ready Tabs for my seasonal allergies. It dissolves on your tongue without water, so you can take it anytime, any place. One tablet means 24-hour non-drowsy relief from seasonal allergies, and it's safe for children as young as six. There's a low occurrence of side effects, including headache, drowsiness, fatigue, and dry mouth. Action! Talk to your doctor about Claritin Ready Tabs. Call 1-800-CLARITIN. This is for my grandfather, who always said I'd make the family proud. For my mom, who never let me out the door without my homework. For my dad, who worked the night shift to make our lives better. Playing for you, Alpha. Spidey. I don't need a car 
myself and my future. Steve Traxel is the right-hander who draws tonight's assignment with Mark McGuire sitting on 61 home runs. A look at the MCI starting lineup for the St. Louis Cardinals. Delano De Shields will lead off at second base. Fernando Tatis bats second and third with Mark McGuire hitting third and first base. And there are the numbers in his career against Traxel. Ray Langford backs up McGuire in the Cardinal lineup with Ron Ganton left. John Mabry in right, Luis Ordaz in short. The pitcher hits eight for Tony La Russa in the second half of the year. That means Merker tonight with Eli Marrero catching and batting ninth. How about the defense for the Chicago Cubs? They've committed 93 errors as a team. And Sammy Sosa always on the list of outfield assists in the National League. He has 13. And that defense backs up tonight's starting pitcher, right-hander Steve Traxel. Traxel with two types of fastballs. He'll run the ball away to a left-handed batter and in tight with that cut fastball. And he does have an excellent splitter. That's who Mark McGuire and the Cardinals will be facing this evening. You see that fastball that he'll either cut or sink, the split finger fastball. All those pitches that we just described normally are pitches that are worked at the bottom of the strike zone right into Mark McGuire's strength. Here's the first pitch to Delano to Shields, the bunt. He gets it past the pitcher. Top play, Morandini, sick base hit to Shields. Perfectly executed bunt by Delano to Shields. All he has to do is get it by the pitcher. You can see from the arc on that ball, it has backspin. Gets it past Steve Traxel. The ball checks up on the infield grass, and Mickey Morandini with an outstanding bare hand play, but no chance to get the speed to Shields at first. So the fans here uh, thinking about the big arc, and they got the small arc. <laughs> here is Tatis, one on, nobody out. Cardinals trailing by two as the Cubs came up with two in the top of the inning, and Traxel. That's strike one off the bat of Tatis. You notice one of the points on our scouting report. Very deliberate worker. Yes. Stated in another way. He is. He's slow. He takes forever. And on a night like tonight, you would imagine it might kick down one more notch. Draxel takes his time and gets back on top. As Tatis watches the look over. The Shields has stolen 21. Here's the 0-1. One ball, one strike from Traxel. I was talking to Scott Service, who also caught yesterday's game, and he said when McGuire was on deck before he came up the first time, he looked over to the on-deck circle, and he said, you, I have never seen a guy on deck look as focused as Mark McGuire did yesterday. It's an interesting point to talk about. And as Traxel steps off, we can. I think that's the difference between McGuire and maybe somebody else who might be in this type of situation with regard to concentration. The 1 1 pitch is chopped foul outside third. Mark McGuire is able to separate all that goes on before the game, the media, the pressure that is involved in doing what he's doing. And each individual at bat, and he calls what he's doing right there, not sleeping. He's visualizing what he thinks will happen when he steps into the box against Traxel. A little cat nap in the on deck circle never hurt anybody anyway. You can sleep standing up. Like horses do. <laughs> One on, nobody out in a ball, and two strike count on Fernando Tatis. Check on the runner, and they got him. DeShields picked off first by Traxel. So DeShields is gone as Traxel caught him catching a quick nap standing over at first. We should have said he's a very deliberate worker until he goes to first. Then he's got quick feet, and that gets to line out of Shields. An argument from Tony LaRusso. 
Now the entire Cubs pitching staff throughout the season has been accused of using that Bach move, particularly the right-handed pitchers, buckling that left knee, the front knee first, and then spinning to throw to first base. And it certainly appeared that that's what Traxel did and got away with one. The right-handed pitchers used that move, taught to them by Phil Reagan, who used to be the vulture in Los Angeles. That was his nickname as a short reliever. Don Drysdale worked it about as well as anybody I ever saw. Now a breaking ball strikes out Tatis, two out, nobody on, with Mark McGuire walking to the plate in the first. We'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching the Cincinnati Reds and the Houston Astros on our FX cable channel. They don't even wait for the pitch now with the flash bulbs popping all over the ballpark as Mark McGuire digs in for his first at bat of the night. Sitting on 61 home runs. And a ball low and away. It is overwhelming. <laughs> these flash bulbs popping around the park. It's almost like lightning flashing when the, when the pitch is. is delivered. Everyone trying to catch their glimpse of history as the 1 0 pitch is inside 2 0. The Roger Maris family watching. <laughs> Here comes the 2 0 pitch. 3 0, and Traxel hasn't been close with any one of the three. Bob, the points you made on Sunday about Mark McGuire not hitting one 3 0 pitch out of the park this year. His son, Matt, his 10 year old son, Matt, who got here just in time yesterday to see number 61. The 3 0 pitch. A three hopper to short picked up by Hernandez. And the tag at first. I have to tell you, that is rare. Mark McGuire, all year long, just will not swing at a 3 0 pitch. He did here, and he's the final out of the first. Every man has a mountain to climb. Part of Siberia is he from, anyway? Krabs! What are you doing, shoot? Krabs, you're here to rebound. Stay out of the way. Crabs! Yo, coach, you gotta get this Crabs guy out of here. K, out of N, N, N. I know how to spell. I'm from here. Man, you are terrible, terrible, terrible. You want to get somewhere? Then work, then work, then work. What beer was there at the top? Buy your beer. Okay. Uh -huh. Coors Light. That's C-O-O-R-S. <laughs> Coors Light. Frost brewed. Rocky Mountain cold. I never walk into a place I don't know how to walk out of. That's the first thing they teach you. In a world of covert operatives, he was given an assignment. This is what we're after. I want 100,000 up front. I want another 100,000 when you get the case. But there was more to the mission. Get out of here. Walk away. Than he ever imagined. The girl sold us out. Robert De Niro, Ronan, rated R. Starts September 25th. I don't want to pull over. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Oh. Here. The, the air is on. Roll down your window. No, roll off your window. window. Introducing Solara, an entirely different kind of Camry. It's for you. Mr. McGuire, I know you're having a pretty good season, but we'd really like to start our season. So why don't you do me a favor and try to hit a home run tonight, okay? For me? This special edition of Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Blockbuster Video, where you'll find more copies of new releases. Go to Blockbuster and go home happy. 
Welcome back to St. Louis. Welcome back to Bush Stadium. First pitch was swung on and fouled by Scott Service for strike one. And tonight's Skyview coverage from the Bud One Airship is brought to you by Brew Refresh Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. They're floating overhead while we play down below. One ball, one strike on service, a 2 12 hitter. Merker gave up a one out walk in the first. And then three hits would follow in two runs for the Cubs. They lead 2 nothing. Into center field, Langford back a few. One up, one down here in the second for Chicago. So service is gone, and the batter will be the pitcher, Steve Traxel. Traxel, a very good hitter, as you can see from those numbers. Tony LaRusa puts his pitcher in the eight spot. Steve Traxel's a guy that could probably hit higher in the order as well. Well, for all of those baseball fans who wondered at times why does the pitcher always have to hit ninth I mean sometimes he might be a more dangerous hitter than a guy hitting higher in the lineup Tony La Russa has taken that to the extreme in the second half of the year if your pitchers a more dangerous hitter than a guy hitting up in the lineup get rid of the guy hit, hitting up in the lineup absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Traxel with a one ball one strike count one out nobody on and up and away you know predominantly it's been the catcher hitting oh, in the on. number nine spot so I ask you to Bob yes here's the two on to Traxel I caught the zone two and two I asked the two guys below my name there what would you think if you came to the park and saw your name in the number nine spot Still two and two, which we, gives us plenty of time to talk about. I'll tell you what I would think. I would think that uh, how lucky I was being in the American League. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a short time in the American League, and I became very familiar with that number nine hole. And let me tell you this, batting ninth is better than batting tenth. That's right. <laughs> Traxel flies to center for Langford. And the first two are gone here in the second inning. Well we will be highlighting Mark McGuire all night and in order to not clutter his at bats with this sort of stuff while he's at the plate we'll tell you where Big Mac ranks in the National League this season total base is third on base percentages way up you could have added that to the list number one in the league the home runs we all know about the line drive in the left field and the Cubs go in order and the amazing thing for McGuire the on base percentage with only 53 singles, he's hit 61 home runs. Is that them? Yep. That's them. Titanic, guaranteed to be there at Blockbuster, and you get a free limited edition print. Winner of 11 Academy Awards. Yours to treasure. Yours to own. Now, take the voyage home on video cassette. Titanic. Guaranteed to be there at Blockbuster Video. One official Major League Baseball, $9. New ball, $9. New ball, $9. New ball, new ball, new ball, $9. New windshield, $100. 62. Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Official card of Major League Baseball and believer that records were made to be broken. EA Sports presents Cyberberry. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Map NFL 99. EA Sports. It's in the game. This special edition of Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Coors Light. Frost brewed to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. By MasterCard, official card of Major League Baseball and fan of the great American pastime. By the Toyota Solara Coupe, an entirely different kind of Camry. It's for you. And by the U.S. Army. Be a part of the toughest, smartest Army in the world. Be all you can be. The first view from just outside Union Station here in downtown St. Louis. And there's a man who made his name in 
the shadow of the arch during his years in the big leagues. Now when Sammy Sosa says Mark McGuire is the man he still has to take a backseat to the man which is Stan Musial and uh, one of the greatest players ever to play this game. Perhaps the greatest low ball hit hitter in the history of the game but a guy who never reached as many as 40 home runs never that gives you another idea of the accomplishment of Mark McGuire. Ray Langford takes a pitch up and away ball one and we are underway in the bottom of the second Langford Ganton Mabry for the Cardinals who trail by two they've been out hit three one and Ray Langford very quietly like many others on this Cardinal club who have had good seasons very quietly is putting together one of those 30 homer 100 RBI seasons he has hit 26 home runs he's driven in 91 and his average is at 287. thinking on my way down to the ballpark today about McGuire what I could ask what I shouldn't ask and I wonder if the season for McGuire has kind of been like one long one long no hitter I mean nobody ever mentions to the guy who's pitching a no hitter hey you know you're working a no hitter well for the most part his teammates don't talk about home runs and they don't talk about what he is about to do they kind of stay away and it's more his teammates responsibility to get his mind off home runs and off the game of baseball. A ball and two strikes on Langford, now two and two. That's a real testament to his teammates that, I mean, let's face it, all ball players like to get recognized for their accomplishments, but uh, in this particular season, everything else is gonna pale in comparison to what Mark McGuire has done, yet the rest of the Cardinals have gone out, Ray Langford included, and had very solid seasons while putting their ego on the back burner and allowing Mac to be the star of the show. Second strikeout for Traxel. First out here in the second inning. Next Tuesday, find out who survives the big propane blast and who doesn't on the season premiere of King of the Hill. And see why Sue is the breakout personality of the new season on the series premiere of Costello before an all new Guinness. It's Fox Tuesday starting next week at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Typically, you'd be seeing all of that tonight, but. In this chase for history we bring you live coverage of the Cardinals and Cubs and that's a home run but the wrong direction off the bat of Gant as he pulled the trigger too quickly and that strike one on Gant who's hitting 231. You would, was crushed. You would think that Mark McGuire would be the breakout personality in 1998 but this guy had 49 home runs his rookie year back in 1987 to lead the American League. He's had over 50 his last two years 58 last year. There's a strike to Gannis quickly 0 and 2 and Bob he's the first player in the history of this game to hit 50 or more home runs in three consecutive seasons. Ruth never did it. Maris didn't do it. All of the other great home run hitters didn't do it. Hank Aaron never had a 50 home run season. Here's the 0 2 to Gant. Still 0 and 2. We talked about it a little bit Sunday. It's not that easy. I spent four years throwing batting practice for the San Francisco Giants and every day you lay the ball right down the middle of the plate 65 or 70 miles an hour guys try to take you deep they hit it off the top of the cage they hit ground balls to the infield Mark McGuire has done this against very good major league pitching and made it look very easy it's not that easy all the while accumulating one hundred forty seven walks which goes into the on base percentage but it points out how selective he has been and how selective he has had to become because pitchers just aren't going to lay it in there for him to get on that so called list. A ball and two strikes and Gantt shoots it foul again. Nineteen eighty seven to nineteen ninety five. Mark McGuire has certainly improved with age. Look at the home runs in the last three years. He has averaged 57, oh. 96, 97, 98. <laughs> a ball and two strikes on Gant, and that's the opposite way into right for Sosa. For the Cardinals, two up and two down. You consider what he did last year. As we continue down our McGuire path, Mabry walks in. Last year, Mark McGuire ends up with 58 home runs. And toward the 
last part of the season the last two months he gets traded to a new league with different pitchers pitchers he's never seen different ballparks different setting and he hits 24 home runs as opposed to the 34 he hit to start the season in the American League he ends up with 58 without even knowing the pitchers in the National League. Ball one to John Mabry two out nobody on and John takes it just low two and oh from Traxel. Mark has played one hundred and eighty seven games with the Cardinals. This is one eighty seven. He has eighty five home runs in that time which is one hundred eighty seven games a little more than one year one season. Two balls and a strike on Mabry. Langford struck out. Gant flying to right. Tracks will be behind on the count. Brings in the 2 1. 2 2. We mentioned during the weekend, John Mabry has had a couple of occasions to slip into the Cardinal lineup and fill in for Mark McGuire at first base. That has happened on the road, mind you, but. Those fans in other cities and other ballparks have flooded that team's front office with complaints. Here's a fly ball to center. This is what Mabry can do. Hit it 400 feet into dead center. And who's waiting for it on the run? Lance Johnson. Back after this from your local Fox station. All right, Mark. I watched your show. Now you watch mine. The series premiere of Costello after King of the Hill next Tuesday at 8.30, 7.30 Central. Does a woman really want from a man? Good, rough, more like the motion of the ocean. Let's talk about sex things. Now, three friends <laughs> and 75 women we talk about sex all the time. are putting together a film Action. to set the record straight. What do you think faking this girl? It's a serious issue for females. Booty call. Let's talk about sex. I have a very special skill I'd like to share with you today. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Rated R starts Friday. Going backwards is pretty strange, which is why Proposition 9 makes no sense. It would undo California's working electric system and reverse our forward progress. Prop 9's backward thinking would repeal our state's emerging competitive electric system. In fact, all we have to look forward to if Prop 9 passes is higher electric rates and higher taxes. Proposition 9 makes no sense. It's a backward step for California. In November, vote no on Proposition 9. Hammer it up with the Taylors on Home Improvement tonight at 9 on Fox 11. Ken Merker back to work as the Cubs will bat here in the third inning with Hernandez, Grace, and Sosa do up. Cubs out in front 2 0 and a ball low from Merker. Hernandez drew a walk, which started the uprising for the Cubs in the first inning. And he pops it up here on the infield for McGuire. How does it feel Mark waiting for something to come down forever that thing took at hang time of about six seven seconds. There's John McGuire Mark's father what a birthday present he received here yesterday 61st birthday 61st home run from his son to tie Roger Maris before this packed crowd at Bush Stadium. Well he's ruined it for every other major leaguer I mean well you know how are you going to top that for a birthday present for your dad. <laughs> I asked McGuire if he knew anybody that turned 62 today. <laughs> <laughs> he 
here it is he picks up his son Matt. And you can see him saying happy birthday dad. And the thumbs up it, it's just such a feel good atmosphere around here. As Grace takes a strike and it's one and one and yesterday made it may have been the crowning blow. The one one pitch to Grace the opposite way and Mark Grace is two for two. Two hops to Gant and there's a man on with Sammy Sosa walking to the plate. So Mark Grace has been so good at for so many years serving that ball into left field. And here's Sosa. Not only a feel good attitude in this ballpark Joe and Bob but this game is being broadcast to 100 countries. And I'll guarantee you one of those countries the Dominican Republic right in the southeastern corner is a little town San Pedro de Macorís that has produced more major league players than any other city per capita in the world and Sosa is one of them. And you are looking at a man at the plate that truly is the ambassador to the United States from the Dominican Republic. Absolutely. The Dominican Republic could not be more well represented. And then by Sammy Sosa. The force out at second and got them both. An inning ending 5-4-3 double play. Sosa has a single. He's now one for two and we move to the bottom of the third. Bottom of the order coming up. Work piling up? Let's go. That's the perfect time to declare a national holiday. Let's go. National Car Rentals declaring every day a national holiday. Let's go. With our great holiday rates, you can escape to the outdoors. Let's go. Or the golf greens. Or just about anywhere else by renting a midsize from National in Florida or California for only $159 per week. At this rate, you can't afford to stay home. So call National Car Rental now. Let's go. And declare your own national holiday. Trains now go 300 miles an hour. Mail 3,000 miles a second. Athletes continually break records. So how come pain relief isn't faster? Introducing Advil Liquid Gels, the first and only pain reliever in a faster-acting liquid-filled capsule that's gentle on your stomach. On tough pain, Advil Liquid Gels are stronger and faster than extra-strength Tylenol. Headaches to muscle aches. New Advil Liquid Gels. Advanced medicine for pain. Just got faster. He was an ace player who gave up cards to go to law school. But just when his life was coming together, his best friend got in trouble with the mob. 25 grand do I stop breaking things. You're fixing to go down hard. Come on. Now, you little punk. We do what we used to do, man. You find the games, you scout them, I sit and I mop them up. He's got to risk everything to save him. You sure about this? You see any other way? Matt Damon. Edward Norton. Deal. Rounders. Rated R. Starts Friday in theaters everywhere. Fortunately, when you buy a Honda certified used car, you know what you're getting. Because to be certified, first it must pass a 150-point inspection. Then it's backed by one of the strongest warranties in the industry. King of the Hill isn't on tonight because I want to watch Mark McGuire. And they can't do the show without me. So tune in next week and find out if I die. Welcome back to Bush Stadium in St. Louis. We move to the bottom of the third inning with the Cubs out in front, 2 0. Luis Ordaz, Kent Merker, and Eli Marrero, the bottom three in the order for the Cardinals, down 2 0. And Ordaz takes a pitch up and in for ball one. Joining us in the booth is Don Marr, the president of the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. And Don, you've brought along a little friend with you. Yes, we've got the uh, bat that Roger Maris hit his 60, uh, 60th home run with. And we'll take a look, a close look at that bat, which is autographed by Roger Maris. And uh, you bring that with you, and I would imagine that bat will not leave your sight until you get back to upstate New York. You're absolutely right. When you travel around with something like that, uh, you're traveling around with uh, a piece of history, a piece of this country's history. And uh, as you watch this game, uh, do you set your sights on any uh, one particular thing as, as you watch 
Mark McGuire take his at bats or are you thinking all right I want the shoes I want the bat <laughs> and I'll take his hat maybe a ball we'd love the bat we'd love the ball uh, we have in our collection Babe Ruth's uh, bat from 60 and uh, is the ball from 60 as well as Maris's 61st bat which I'm holding and the ball from 61. Now so much has been made about the souvenir about the home run ball as Ordaz fouls it back it's three and two the remarkable thing Don is that the last six balls that Mark McGuire has hit out of the park he has been given back by the fan for minimal reward if it's a signed jersey it might be signed bat it might be whatever but he has had to get uh, very little uh, going the other way as Ordaz pops it up on the infield he, he has not seen these baseballs held out for ransom but Don you couldn't begrudge somebody who if they came up with the ball would hold it out for a little money would you. Absolutely not but I think it's very refreshing to see what uh, the baseball fans have been doing they respect Mark and what is it what he's accomplished so much that uh, they've returned those balls to him. And it's, it's great because the baseball uh, players have been the uh, Hall of Fame's greatest fans. Uh, they've been very generous and, and obviously it bodes well for the Hall of Fame uh, when those balls return to Mark. Here's Ken Merker in that strike one. What about the anonymous donor who is giving a million dollars for that ball. What if you're for instance a a fan out there and uh, you're making twenty thousand dollars twenty five thousand dollars a year. And this thing will give you a million in your pocket. Will the Hall of Fame replace that million? <laughs> I'm afraid we would not be able to do that. <laughs> but I couldn't begrudge the fan. Well, Don Mar, we uh, thank you for coming. Uh, your presence uh, has meant a lot to. I know the Maris family. We saw them the other day holding the bat up. What what was their reaction when you showed them the bat? Well, they loved seeing it again. They had seen it, of course, for uh, been in the family for many years. Uh, Roger contributed to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 19. 73 but it was fitting to, for them to, to revisit the bat uh, this weekend. I think one of the fun things about looking at this bat there's still pine tar on it uh, about two the, the widths of Rogers hands are still pine tar old pine tar obviously 37 years old and Bob you and I were talking about the grain of the bat and the indentations uh, with the knot in the uh, in the grain right there you can tell this is about as good a wood right here with this indentation right here the indentation of the seams of the ball and several other indentations along the sweet part where is where Roger hit a lot of those uh, over the course of the 61 season now, good hitters have marks right in that sweet spot and this bat is no exception. How about the weight of that bat does it strike you at all Tim uh, how that weight feels it's about 32 ounces. Mac uses a what uh, a 33 ounce bat. 33. Yeah. This is a, identical to what uh, Sammy Sosa uses. 32 ounces. 34 and a half inches. Well Don Mar, thanks for stopping by as you look at Sosa two out nobody on in the bottom of the third inning with the Cubs out in front two nothing. One ball one strike. I know that that's uh, overhead compartment material. That's not curbside <laughs> check. -in. You got that right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank Don, you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Well what will it be and when will it be as Marrero gets into one to left field but Hill is back to get it and the Cardinals go in order again. Traxel's face the minimum. We go to the fourth inning and the Cubs are out in front by two. My favorite film. Well as a student filmmaker I naturally gravitate towards the classics. Like what. Oh well there's so many. Uh, you know the one with the uh, the guy and the mother, and they're on the thing, and it's it's raining a lot. Need to get reacquainted with the classics? Try this. If it's not a new release, it's a blockbuster favorite. Choose from thousands of titles and keep them for five evenings. I love films with a lot of rain in them. <laughs> yeah. I don't fear anyone in the NFL, but maybe there's somebody else out there pushing himself to be stronger and more powerful than I am. Somebody who thinks he can stop me all by himself. You're not the one, are you? 
Fox Searchlight Pictures presents a comedy with a different perspective. I'm like deformed. Riskier and funnier than the rest. We're freaks. Female problems. Slums of Beverly Hills. Rated R. Now playing. Coming soon to a theater near you. Hear that? See this? Your car's telling you it needs brake service. That means you need Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot. But you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. I don't want to pull over. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Here. The air is on. Roll down your window. No, roll off your window. Introducing Solara, an entirely different kind of Camry. It's for you. If you had a neighbor like Carmine Santucci, got soap? You'd be living in captivity. Friday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Into the fourth inning here in St. Louis. Down below, a packed house. Yesterday, over 50,000 in attendance. Standing room only crowd. And it is history in the making, maybe. This home run watch continues. It is right at the top of the hour, 8 o'clock. And we welcome all of you who have tuned in to watch this one between the Cardinals and the Cubs. McGuire against the Cubs as Hill pops it up into shallow right. John Mabry comes to get it. And Glenn Allen Hill is 0 for 2. That'll bring in Gary Gaetti, who had an RBI single back in the first inning to make it a 2 0 Chicago lead. One out, nobody on, and Gaetti takes a pitch eye from Merker. We understand that there was quite a commotion at the White House, the floor of the Senate this afternoon, over the tax ruling by the IRS commissioner. Uh, yesterday it was announced that the ball, the person who handed the, new, the ball to Mark McGuire, or if he were paid a million dollars for the ball, that there would be an, a remarkable... Uh, tax problem for the person without even receiving money for it. So the commissioner issued a quote today, several quotes, one of which is hilarious. Uh, we're not talking about the commissioner of baseball now. This is the IRS commissioner, uh, the commissioner of the tax code of the United States. And we'll tell you what he said right after this. He said that all I know is the fan who gives back the ball deserves a round of applause, not a big tax bill. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> That's a relief, isn't it? As Gaetti lines another base hit into left field. An RBI single into right his first time. Now one over the outstretched glove of Luis Ordaz for a one-out hit here in the fourth inning. IRS Commissioner Charles Rosati went on to say, sometimes pieces of the tax code can be as hard to understand as the infield fly rule. <laughs> runners at first and second. Runners at first, second, and third. Less than two out. A pop-up on the infield. <laughs> The runners can advance at their own risk. The batter is ruled out. Depending on how many dependents they file. <laughs> one on one out for Mickey Morandini. And a fastball is high from Ken Merker. So this does take all the heat off the person who catches the 62nd home run ball. Gets now they're it to free Mike. and clear. They're, they're free, free and clear. And clear. The you... tax code says, OK, baby, catch it. Do anything you want to with it. Catch it, cash it in. That's right. Or catch it and give it back. They've called a balk. On Merker. Well, Kent Merker commits the balk, which sends Gaetti down to second base with one out here in the fourth inning. For Merker, that's his fourth balk of the year. Interesting shot of Tony LaRusso, who earlier wanted a balk called on Steve Traxel when DeShields was picked off in the bottom of the first. Here's a look at the balk. You can see he started his movement right there and then stopped. Some miscommunication between Merker and his catcher, Marrero. He started his delivery, started his movement, stopped. Of course, that's a balk. Runner sent down to second base. And a strike from Merker to make it 2-1 and one on Morandini, who fly to left to end a long first inning for Merker. 
High fastball. It's three and one. The Chicago lineup is completely different now with a healthier Lance Johnson. He has set up the rest of the order for Jim Riggleman. Now he has Johnson in the spot he belongs, the leadoff spot, and he's getting healthier. And Morandini deeper in the order. They've got a number seven hitter hitting 302, and he draws a one out walk. We remind you that Guinness World Records, prime time would normally be seen at this time, but instead we're bringing you a world record in the making. Mark McGuire's historic shot at home run number 62. Catch an all new Guinness World Records next Tuesday at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, right here on Fox. That'll be preceded by the premieres of King of the Hill and Costello. Two on, one out, Scott Service at the plate. And Service, who is hitting 211, could come up with a big hit for the Cubs. And he does. Into left field. Will they bring Gaetti to the plate? They'll hold him. Gaetti stops at third. The bases are loaded. A single, a balk, a walk, a single, and the bases are loaded for Steve Traxel. Yeah, perhaps a different pitcher in the number nine spot. Tom Gamboa, the third base coach, maybe takes a gamble, tries to send Gaetti, but as we mentioned, Traxel handles that bat pretty well. He can represent himself up there at the plate. Take a chance on the pitcher driving in a run here. We mentioned it earlier. This game by no means is on the back burner as far as the Cubs are concerned, but with all of the hoopla about Mark McGuire, Scott Service hammering a high fastball to left field off Kent Merker. I mean, the Cubs are tied with the Mets once again. The Mets are being throttled by Philadelphia 11 to 3 that game uh, in the sixth inning. But this is a very, very important game for the Chicago Cubs, and yet uh, the center of attention, Mark McGuire. Curtis King getting ready for the Cardinals in their bullpen. And now, as we play here in the month of September, rosters have been expanded. So seeing a relief pitcher warming up in the early innings of a 2 0 game is not that unusual. Strike one on Traxel. Cardinals have Busby, Frascatori, Kraushor, Pick, Isaac King, Jeff Brantley, Bobby Witt, Juan Acevedo, Jose Jimenez, Brian Eversgird, and Lance Painter in their bullpen. And we know how. Fawn Tony La Russa is of going to that bullpen. Yes. We may see them all tonight. Base is loaded one out in the 0 1 pitch. A strike for Merker. It's 0 2. Gaetti, Morandini, and Service, the runners, the bottom of the order trying to do damage for the Cubs here in the fourth. No balls, two strikes, and Traxel a little bloop pop up foul back and out of play. Still 0 2. Really, this game has a really odd feel to it. It does. Strange. For guys who cover games and watch games day after day, even in a game like this, and many Cub fans here in the ballpark, it is awful quiet. Everybody anticipating the next Mark McGuire at bat. But right now the Cubs hoping to cash in on a fourth inning opportunity. Traxel fouls it out of play again. September 8th 1998 and here's a team tied in the wild card standings and yes and yet their performance tonight secondary to one man. That would be he. And a tap foul keeps Traxel alive at the plate and keeps the count 0 and 2. Made mention of it on Saturday that Mark McGuire has really taken a team sport and at least lately turned it into an individual game to the point where everything swirls around McGuire. Meanwhile there's a game going on. Nothing into the count on Traxel and Merker steps off. And you would think that uh, because Mark McGuire has hit 61 home runs that all of baseball at home runs are up. But that is simply not the case. Sammy Sosa with 58. McGuire with 61. That rides Traxel off the plate one and two.
There's the race which they keep track of here in St. Louis on that manually operated scoreboard up in the upper deck. Here's the one two pitch. That's another one out of play off to the right off the bat of Traxel. Everybody says well expansion has caused uh, home runs to be up mightily this year. It is not the case. 1996 or 1990 1987 that's when more home runs were hit than at any time in the history of the game. I beg your pardon it was second to 1996 but last year and this year just about the same. Traxel comes up empty as he strikes out. It's the first strikeout for Merker. And this turns into a bases loaded two out situation for Chicago. And brings in Lance Johnson who has to face the left hander Merker. Johnson is 0 for 2. Big opportunity here for Chicago. Up by two in the fourth inning with the Mets losing big at Philadelphia. Ball one from Merker. It's been a long road back this season for Lance Johnson. Finally getting healthy with that hand. And the numbers have gone up. 2 0 oh from Merker. And as you would expect from Lance Johnson, he normally works deep in the count, forces that opposing pitcher to throw a lot of pitches. Merker missing up high in the zone. Lance Johnson may even take in this at bat until he gets to a strike. Bases loaded two out and there's a strike for Merker two and one. The career numbers one grand slam for Johnson. His numbers with the bases loaded in his long career former property of the St. Louis Cardinals the two one ripped into right field Mabry on the move back to get it to end the inning. Well hit hard hit hit deep and Mabry was there to pull it in for the Cardinals. McGuire hits third in the bottom of the fourth. One official Major League Baseball nine dollars. New ball nine dollars. New ball nine dollars. New ball new ball new ball nine dollars. New windshield. One hundred dollars, sixty-two, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's Mastercard, official card of Major League Baseball, and believer that records were made to be broken. On October second, it's beautiful. Take all you know about adventure and magnify it. Run! DreamWorks Pictures presents. Let's watch your eight-bit beer. <clears throat> I have a thing about drinking from the caboose of another creature. And it's rated PG. Meet Sean Graham, veteran stuntman. This is how he lives. This is what he drives. What else would he drive? Chevy S10, like a rock. of GoldenEye, Kobe Bryant in NBA Courtside, the WCW versus NWO, or Diddy Kong Racing for new additions to the Player's Choice Library for just $39.95. Don't miss it. Hi, wanna dance? Absolutely. On October 2nd. What are you doing? See the world. Why does everybody have to dance the same way? From a whole new perspective. Ants rated PG. Mr. McGuire, I know you're having a pretty good season, but we'd really like to start our season. So why don't you do me a favor and try to hit a home run tonight, okay? For me? This special edition of Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you the three most important words are, hey, beer man. The Bud One airship flying overhead, providing our aerial pictures this evening. As Delano De Shields leads off, bottom of the fourth inning, top of the order for the Cardinals, which includes McGuire, and he takes a strike.
The 0 1 2 to Shields leading off a ball and a strike. Delano a base hit his first time up, but then was picked off first. And Traxel so far has faced the minimum. Nine hitters through three innings. 2 0 Cubs in the fourth inning. And that's foul for strike two. Concentration, the visualization you were talking about earlier, Joe, trying to picture the pitches he will see from Steve Traxel, various locations. A ball and two strikes onto Shields first up in the fourth inning. The opposite way, and Gaetti makes a nice play. The Shields is gone, and let's go down to the field and Steve Lyons. All right, Joe, thank you very much. You know, we've heard a lot from the Maris Suns. Let's hear from one of the Maris daughters. This is Sandra Maris. And boy, these last few days for you since you've been in town, it's been like a roller coaster ride. We haven't really got a chance to talk to you. What has all this meant to you? I'll tell you, the, seeing the crowd the way it is and all the fans behind Mark has just been tremendous. It'd be neat to be able to see what Dad went through, and it's nice to be here and kind of get that feeling. Yeah, I wanted to talk to Richard again. Richard, we've talked to you a lot about how you would feel up until this point. You've had a lot of time to think about how you'd feel if the record gets broken tonight or the next few nights. Do you think you'll change the way you've been thinking? Well, yeah, I mean, at this point, I mean, I'm excited for him. I'd like to see him do it tonight. It's not for just Mark, but for the city of St. Louis. I mean, he's great baseball fans. It'd be fun to see. All right, you know, of course, Roger carried his career with dignity and class just the way these guys have. Let's send it back to you guys up in the booth. All right, Steve, thank you, and thank you to Richard and Sandra. One ball, one strike on Tatis, and the fastball from Traxel makes it one and two. Richard had an excellent point. If Mark McGuire doesn't do it tonight, the Cardinals go on a five-game road trip to Cincinnati and to Houston. Chances are pretty good that he's going to hit one in one of those five games, if not tonight. Well, everybody has thrown this big party, and here comes the man of the hour, Mark McGuire, who is 0 for 1 tonight, his second at bat here in the fourth. We would like to welcome those of you who have been watching the Houston Astros and the Cincinnati Reds on our FX cable channel as Matt McGuire looks on, wondering if this is the at bat. Tuesday September 8th that Mark McGuire moves one place in front of Roger Maris.
match that couldn't happen to a better man. And you will always know where you are at 8.18 p.m. Central Time, September 8th, 1998. On your mark, get set. Bang. Mark was so happy, he had to remember to touch first base. <laughs> I'm not sure if his feet were touching the ground at that point. Mark McGuire, who started the season as Gary Gaetti's teammate. He's been with Rene Latchman over the years. A point to the sky, a hug from Scott Service, and the reaction from his longtime manager, Tony La Russa. My son, Chicago Cubs, Sammy Sosa, unbelievable. Class. Thank you, St. Louis. Well, we asked Mark McGuire before the game if he thought someplace there was a script written and tonight was the night and guys a little sheepish smile crept <laughs> onto his face he didn't want to admit that he wanted it to happen tonight but he said if it's if it's to be tonight is the night to do it here in St. Louis before these fans before the road trip tonight is the night Tuesday September 8th 1998. I was not sure that the ball was going to have enough height to get over the wall. He hit it so hard that it could have gone through the wall. What a tracer. Now Sosa. People cannot begin to imagine what those two have been through in 1998. Two men from completely opposite backgrounds joined in 1998 in the Roger Maris chase. And it's Mark McGuire who gets to the top of the mountain, home run number 62 in the Cardinals 145th game of the year. the interesting things about that home run is no fan had a chance to catch it because the ball wasn't hit up into the stands it was hit into that area below the stands one more look at the swing of Mark McGuire the low fastball line, driven on a line you can see that area right there underneath the sign where the batting cages used to be here at Bush Stadium I believe that's an area where they store the Batting practice equipment, the cages and what have yeah, you. Right. Very uncharacteristic Mark McGuire home run. Normally the towering shots that seem to hang in the air forever. That one happened so quickly the fans were stunned. Bob, it was almost like a, a Sammy Sosa home run. But again, so much made of the fan who's going to catch the ball. And now you have to wonder whether a fan was able to get to it. And where the ball is. <laughs> so it's a salute to Big Mac. Man. Here's the change on the scoreboard. Number 62 for Mark McGuire. 
And no one more than Mark McGuire hopes that the attention this is focused on Roger Maris and his year of 1961 and his career. Roger Maris a great player. No one hopes that all of this attention no one hopes any more than Mark McGuire that this will put Roger Maris in his rightful place in baseball's Hall of Fame. I could not agree with you more. Major League Baseball had said that they did not want to if Mark McGuire hit the home run stop the game midstream but uh, we're finding out Bob Brentley that was an unrealistic <laughs> expectation it's well, impossible the best laid plans of all you know you've heard that saying before I mean the emotion of the moment was entirely too much I mean now nah, you're going to tell the all time single season home run leader don't go over and hug the Marises we got to keep the game moving it's his show let him do what he wants Mark McGuire with that heart pounding at the end of the dugout and the Maco meter surfaces 62 and counting. You had a quick shot of John McGuire Mark's father his parents have been here tracking this over the past couple of days. There's John right in the middle on your left with a Cardinal hat on. And I said it as he came to the plate guys it seems like you throw this man a party night after night after night and he delivers seemingly every time out. What an honor. What an honor. Back to baseball if it's possible as Ray Lightford <laughs> takes a breaking ball for a strike. That's 15 home runs in his last 21 games. <laughs> a 10 minute delay after the home run from McGuire and worth every single second of it. What an honor to be here on hand to watch it. What must be going through his mind right now. Two out nobody on and Langford comes up empty strike two. Well he was fully aware if you read the quote in the paper about his home run trot yesterday when he hit 61 he remembered the home run trot by Hank Aaron back in 1974 when he broke Babe Ruth's career home run total with number 715. He watched that as a young man and now this 1998 season will be remembered as Mark McGuire's year. History made here tonight St. Louis Missouri at Bush Stadium. There is your new single season home run champion 62 and counting. You know what I love about being the beer man? Steak was the act! The fans. Because when I'm pouring them a cold Coors Light, they're no more courteous, polite. Ah, this team fights! Well mannered people around. I'm giving them a frostbrew beer to cool their parched throats. And hey, that's important when you're cheering for your team. Yeah, Here you go, sir. That cheap beer, man, thanks a lot. Keep the change. Aren't they great? Lossiak, I know where you live! I have central contact on your deck! This is for Mr. Blanchard, who told me to make something of myself. For Miss Miller, who never let me settle for a seat. For my parents, who believe in my dreams. For myself, for my future. Be all that you can be. Because of our passion for design and engineering, our vehicles speak for themselves. And recently, others have had some great things to say about our quality too. Sebring Convertible, Total Quality Award. Town and Country, Total Quality Award. Cirrus, best in class and initial quality by J.D. Power and Associates. Concord, best in class and initial quality by J.D. Power and Associates. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Joan London for Claritin. In my line of work, you've got to be ready. Ready to hit your mark. That's why my doctor prescribed Claritin Ready Tabs for my seasonal allergies. It dissolves on your tongue without water, so you can take it anytime, anyplace. 
One tablet means 24-hour non-drowsy relief from seasonal allergies and is safe for children as young as six. There's a low occurrence of side effects, including headache, drowsiness, fatigue, and dry mouth. Action! Talk to your doctor about Claritin Ready Tabs. Call 1-800-CLARITIN. Mark, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of high fives, but I wanted to be the first to tell you that the season premiere of King of the Hill will be next Tuesday night. A line drive into right field off the bat of Jose Hernandez, and you'll excuse us if we missed a pitch in the top of the fifth inning. Getting McGuire coming back onto the field. Well worth it as Mark Grace walks in. Tonight, two for two. Pair of singles, an RBI, a run scored. But right now, it, it's like the game is taking place elsewhere. <laughs> Up the middle, off the mound to Ordaz has time, two gone. McGuire in this 1998 season as Sosa rips it foul has said just about all the right things and he is a, a modern athlete who respects the game and respects his predecessors and what he showed us all and the Maris family with those hugs over there are lasting memories that will not go away now this crowd gets into it for Sammy Sosa one point the home run 341 feet the shortest in distance McGuire has hit all year. Two balls and a strike. But if you figure the distance between St. Louis and Cooperstown, it becomes the longest one he's hit. This crowd now is standing for Sammy Sosa. They would love nothing more than to see Sosa connect. And hit number 59. These two have come together in 1998, and Cardinal and Cub fans are together right now rooting for Sosa. That's Three and a two. switch. <laughs> it is. For Cardinal and Cub fans to be together on anything. But the one thing the rivalry has always been is very respectful Absolutely. of the other team and the other fan. The 3 2 pitch to Sosa, a two out walk, and the crowd. Cardinal fans mainly booing Merker as he issues the two out walk. One would think that now that Mark McGuire is relaxed that he could go on and hit maybe 15 more home runs and, and the same could be said for Sammy Sosa. It's very possible that Sosa could end up with more home runs than Mark McGuire this year. Let Allen Hill strike one. That's one theory that you hear that, okay, now McGuire's broken the record. Sammy Sosa's still involved in a heated pennant race in the wild card chase. And there is some danger in McGuire relaxing. Sure. He could go one way or the other. Sure. He could go off or he could fall off in the home run pace, and Sosa could pass him by. But time will tell about that. One on, two out, strike two to Glenn Allen Hill. Meanwhile, it's a two to one game, Bob. It is. Fifth inning. Cubs out in front by a run, and they have a man at first and two up. Well, considering the McGuire, the 19 games remaining after tonight, or 19 games including tonight, if you average 3.3 at bats per game, which is about what Mack has done this season, he's going to get a little over 60 at bats the remainder of the season. Well, he's hit 13 in his last 63 at bat, so it's conceivable he might hit 75. Glenn Allen Hill a full swing, but he's jammed, and Ordaz back to get it to end the inning. So a two-out walk to Sosa. He is left on. We will have lots more tonight. Halfway through this one, a night that history is made in St. Louis, two to one, Chicago. You're the beer man. Playing in pain comes with the territory. 
But a few nagging injuries won't stop me from delivering cold Coors Light. Hey, Bear Man. The 95 is what the doctor called Pop Top Finger. But I kept cracking open that Rocky Mountain refreshment. 96 was a wicked case of beer elbow. But the fans wanted a frost brewed beer, and they got it. Knock the beer man out of the game? Well, that would take something really serious. Coors Light! Yeah, you want it. Coors Light! He was a law student whose life was finally coming together until his best friend got in trouble with the mob. Now, he's got to play the game of his life to save him. Matt Damon, Edward Norton, Rounders, Rated R. Starts Friday in theaters everywhere. Hey there. Now, I got something here that's downright fun. My new popcorn chicken. Crunchy morsels of tender white meat. Hurry down to KFC. Try my new popcorn chicken for $1.99. At KFC, we do chicken right. We asked the Hartford Wolfpack to try the Norelco Reflex Action for 21 days. There were signs of resistance. Get that electric out of my face. This ain't gonna do nothing on my beard. But then they began realizing how it adjusted to the contours of their faces for an unexpectedly close, smooth shave without the nicks and cuts of a blade. Kinda like the Zamboni, eh? Even their fans noticed they were changed men. Look at you pretty boys, so smooth. The Norelco Reflex Action. Put it to the test. If you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. Guaranteed. This special edition of Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Blockbuster Video, where you'll find more copies of new releases. Go to Blockbuster and go home happy. By Claritin. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you the three most important words are, hey, beer man. And by the Toyota Solara Coupe, an entirely different kind of Camry. It's for you. Well, folks, tonight's Skyview coverage from the Bud One airship is brought to you by Brewery Refresh Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Down below, history has been made. Mark McGuire connects for home run number 62, the new single season home run champion. He did it in the bottom of the fourth inning at 18 minutes past the hour of 8 o'clock. Here's a strike and the count on one on Ron Gann. Well, Folks packed into this stadium, hoping tonight would be the night. Mark McGuire did not disappoint as his march continues. Gant flies into right. Sammy Sosa coming on. He makes the catch. One away, and let's take it now down to Steve Lyon. Steve? All right, Joe, thank you very much. This is an unbelievable story. I'm standing down here with Tim Forneras. He caught the ball. He works for the club on the grounds crew along with his brother Tito, and his mother works as a concierge. Now, Tim, tell me about how he caught the ball. It was unbelievable. Right when it hit off the bat, I knew it was going out. Uh, it went right over the sign. Uh, there was a bunch of grounds crew guys on the wall, but I was right on the edge, and I said, that ball was mine. So I jumped off. I ran as fast as I could. I snagged it, and then I didn't know what to do with it, so I kind of walked around. Well, you know, we talk about the pressure that Mark McGuire has had hitting the home runs. A lot of pressure on you as to what you're going to do with the ball, and what did you decide? Well, it's a definite decision. It will definitely go to Cooperstown, or, you know, Mr. McGuire, of course, and then he can decide what he wants to do with it. I just don't want to be taxed. <laughs> That's a great answer. You know, this is his mother, Tina. Now, you must be very proud of a son who's willing to give up that kind of a, a responsibility, give the ball back to the guy who rightfully deserves it. He's always been a giving child, and I had no doubt in my mind that he wouldn't do this. He said it. He said if I ever had that opportunity, I wouldn't even think about it twice. It's his. It's you, know, you know, Tino, you were out there with him, and you said he was just too quick for you. He got to the ball quicker. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, the ball went out just like you said. And next thing I knew, it was over, and he was already halfway there, and I didn't even have a chance for it. And there isn't a better kid. I mean, he said since, you know, if I ever had the chance, I'd give it to Mr. McGuire, and he can do whatever he wants with it after that. So he's been saying that all along. Well, just another one of those great stories that we've had here all week long. Let's send it back to you guys in the booth. All right, Steve. There's where it went. In between the K's for the strikeouts at the top of the wall in left field. 341, again, the shortest in distance. But the biggest in significance that Mark McGuire hits in 1998. Two out, nobody on, and a breaking ball is a strength to Luis Ordez. Tell you, I'm overwhelmed that Tim would give the ball immediately to McGuire without thinking. Overwhelmed. I think we're all, the three of us are finding out things about ourselves that <laughs> we might not have known before. A lot of people this are. Home run chance. I think a lot of people are. We're not the only mercenaries in this country. <laughs> Here, watch. Watch Tim. You'll see him come up. That's not Tim. It's from Tim. It's one of the ushers down by the field, and McGuire just gives it right back to him. 
So Tim gives it to an usher to give to McGuire right at the home plate celebration. McGuire says, "Yeah, take it back." Now he eventually will get it, and Cooperstown eventually will get it, and we will track the story about young Tim. Ordaz pops it up into center field, and Lance Johnson is there. I see his mom. I see Tim's mom, Rita, every day when I come to the ballpark, and I saw her tonight. She said, "You think tonight's the night?" I said, "I think tonight's the night." Little did she know, young Tim would come up with it. Is that them? Yep. That's them. Titanic, guaranteed to be there at Blockbuster, and you get a free limited edition print. Winner of 11 Academy Awards. Yours to treasure, yours to own. Now, take the voyage home on video cassette. Titanic, guaranteed to be there at Blockbuster Video. I've owned three Hyundais because they are really good cars. And I went to the website, checked pricing, options, features. It's a gorgeous car. You get a lot for the price. This time behind their warranties and their promises. I called up my girlfriends and they all came over and we had this big, she brought the car home kind of party. I'm just giving you facts. You know, this is how I feel about my Elantra. You have to drive it and the car will speak for itself. We have our own um, back to school ritual. Man, we got a bunch of stuff. We go to Walmart, we get all of our shopping done in one oh, day. That's cute. No matter what you need for back to school, you'll find it at Walmart. All the school clothes, all the supplies that she needs. And you'll always find great prices. It's a beginning of a new school year for me, too. Hey, whose is this? So I sneak in a few items for myself. Oh, that's my mom's. Isn't oh, cute? Hey, like we're starting fresh here. Why should she get all the goodies? Walmart. Always low prices. Always. On September 11th, Hollywood Pictures invites you to experience one of the most unique and touching films you'll ever see. I'm going to be a hero. Pretty vague job description, isn't it? Simon Birch is one of the best films of the year. I'm a miracle, you know? Yeah, yeah. A rare film experience so moving, so entertaining, you'll never forget it. Simon Birch, rated PG, starts this Friday in select cities. Number 62? Yeah, I got it. You want it? Watch Costello for details. The series premiere of Costello after King of the Hill next Tuesday. Well, okay, we're getting a little greedy. Mark McGuire, eight multi-home run games this season. 51 in his career. He's hit one tonight. He's hit 62 on the year. And it is our intention, folks, after the game as Gaetti leads it off in a 2-1 to one game in favor of the Cubs. We're in the sixth inning. It's our intention to interview Mark McGuire right at the conclusion of this game. And that brings up another aspect of this guys how gracious Mark McGuire has been with his time and how wonderful a job the Cardinals PR department led by Brian Bartow has been in handling this situation. Two balls and a strike on Gaetti. Dan Farrell and all of the people general manager Walt Jockety and a list of people that runs on and on and on and getting Mark McGuire uh, to us at times to the other parts of the media at times as Gaetti lofts a foul ball down the left field line two and two Major League Baseball's done a great job as well. There's Walt Jockety the man responsible for signing Mark McGuire and Mark McGuire is not even among the top five paid players in Major League Baseball. You talk about a steal and a deal. Two balls, two strikes, it's still two and two. How much money do you think Mark McGuire has generated for the industry of baseball in 1998? I don't know if you could put a number on no. it. Attendance up at every ballpark that Mac went to, priceless. That says it all right there. Well you've seen history tonight next Tuesday you can find out who survives the big propane blast and who doesn't on the season premiere of King of the Hill history next Tuesday and then see why Sue is the breakout personality of the new season on the series premiere of Costello before an all new Guinness it's Fox Tuesday starting next week at 8 Eastern 7 Central. We've Here's Warren Dini. We've sur survived the blast tonight we have one more to go next Tuesday. That's right. <laughs> Wow.
So one out nobody on for Mickey Morandini who is 0 for 1 with a fly out and a walk. That's strike two. But you mentioned Walt Jockety. I live here in St. Louis when he made the trade. A lot of the local media said it's just run a player. The Cardinals were basically out of the running for the postseason last year. And they said why would you give up three young pitchers to get Mark McGuire when you know he's going to be a free agent and not stay here. Well well before the end of the season Mark McGuire gave everybody here in St. Louis and really throughout the Midwest an early Christmas present when he said he would stay here signed for less money deferred a lot of money then made the announcement he would donate a million dollars a year to charity for abused children and it fell out of the sky from nowhere and here he is Mark McGuire who probably will end his career in a Cardinal uniform and look what he's done in 1998 acquired by the St. Louis Cardinals in a trade with the Oakland Athletics for pitchers T.J. Matthews Eric Ludwig and Blake Stein on July 31st 1997 and how good must those three guys feel right now to have been traded for Mark McGuire T.J. Matthews who grew up right across the river was heartbroken and he was traded away from the Cardinals very good young right hander pitching out in Oakland Blake Stein looks like he's going to be a good starter and Eric Ludwig is no longer with the Oakland A's he is now pitching for Jim Leland in the world champion lest we forget Florida Marlins a little fly ball into center one hop picked up by Langford off the bat of service a two out single well talking about the possibility of McGuire being a rent a player last year Walt Jockety said I knew once we got him here to St. Louis put him in front of these Cardinals fans at Bush Stadium in the Midwest the kind of people that are here knowing the kind of guy Mark McGuire was Walt Jockety was pretty sure they'd be able to ink him to a contract. And you talk about a perfect match. This community these baseball fans which if you're not familiar with it as Traxel lines a base hit into left field the Cardinals will go over three million in attendance. A feat normally reserved for cities the size of New York Los Angeles uh, the hysteria around the Colorado Rockies when they came into the league they will go over three million and they do it from an enormous drawing area throughout the Midwest states that surround Missouri people drive mile after mile after mile to come watch the Cardinals and lately to come watch McGuire two on two out Lance Johnson at the plate. Johnson trying to add to the Chicago lead which is two to one he takes a strike. Back to back two out hits and now Johnson to the right side good play by the shields to his left and the inning is over no runs two hits two left eight left tonight for the Cubs another look at number sixty two three hundred forty one feet later. That man's your new single season home run champion. Is that them? Yep. That's them. Titanic, guaranteed to be there at Blockbuster, and you get a free limited edition print. Winner of 11 Academy Awards. Yours to treasure. Yours to own. Now, take the voyage home on video cassette. Titanic, guaranteed to be there at Blockbuster Video. Okay. Oh, great, great. Yeah, that tuna. These AC Delco parts are about the most dependable you can buy. They should really help improve your performance. Come on, they're all the same. I think I'm out of this bushel basket. Okay. AC Delco, no matter what you drive, if you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. The home run race is heating up. Step up to the plate and play the Pepsi Major League Baseball home run countdown. Go to in-store Pepsi displays, fill out an entry form, and if you guess the 98 home run champions total, you'll be entered to win a trip before to this year's World Series.
when the sensor's out of town Friday night. And boy, does it show. Living in Captivity series premiere. What a cute little grill, Carmine. Don't worry, size doesn't matter. And getting personal season premiere. <laughs> this ain't TGIF. Ow. Wow. It's a wild thing Friday starting this Friday at 8, 7 central. Big Mac and the Cardinals take on the Astros. Wars, Brewers, Battle Sosa, and the Cubs. Coverage begins with In the Zone, 1230 Eastern and Pacific. Bottom of the sixth inning. And, wow, what a night for Cardinal fans. Not only do you catch a guy who is going to end up in the Hall of Fame, but you see the Major League debut at the plate right now of J.D. Drew. The highly touted prospect who held out from the Philadelphia Phillies after two years ago being drafted by the Phillies seeking an enormous contract it didn't happen he sat out he played in the Northern League and Bob Renly he goes back into the draft the Cardinals select him sign him another feather in the cap of Walt Jockety and here he is Man, what a night to make your debut huh I don't think he'll forget this day. J.D. Drew gets his name in the box score. A box score that may likely end up in Cooperstown. The 0-1. One ball, one strike. So J.D. Drew, wearing number eight, making his major league debut, left-handed hitter with power. That's strike two. We're in the sixth inning and Drew leads it off. With Marrero and DeShields to follow. A ball and two strikes. Two and two. See J.D. Drew starting his career tonight. And I can't help but think, and I was thinking about him all day. Butch Yatkeman turned 90 years old on June 15th. He worked for the Cardinals over 70 years. And he is at home watching the game this evening. And I would be remiss not to say hello to the diminutive equipment trainer and equipment manager of the St. Louis Cardinals for over 70 years and loved by everybody in this city. And not here at the park tonight, but watching the game on television. The 3 2 to Drew is hit down the right field line. He hooked it, and it's foul. Wow. Well, this may be his first at bat in the big leagues, but the Cubs have a pretty good scouting report on J.D. Drew. A steady diet of off-speed pitches. Every fastball he's seen has been up around the letters. Would this have been something, had this ball had gone out of the ballpark, his first plate appearance on the night that McGuire hit 62? There's Bud Selig's reaction and Jim Gray's for good measure over the outside corner and J.D. Drew strikes out to start the sixth inning. So first major league at bat a strikeout. Dear Diary what a night I had tonight in St. Louis and that is an iffy pitch called for strike three. Well you might as well get used to it now J.D. <laughs> You're going to have a few of those called on you in your career. So the major league debut not what J.D. thought about on his flight from Memphis after playing at Tim McCarver Stadium to St. Louis to make his major league debut here tonight on September 8th. Eli Marrero now who is 0 for 1. Cardinals down by a run in the sixth inning. Cubs needing this ball game. I think they could have the old. It's, I think such a tired line but a win win situation you see history <laughs> and you get a victory as the Mets are just getting pummeled in Philadelphia 16 to 3 in the eighth inning and the win tonight would put the Cubs back a game out in front in the wild card race San Francisco Giants will play at San Diego later on this evening the Giants are two games behind both the Mets and the Cubs entering tonight's play. Two balls and a strike now three and one. We talked about the rivalry here and in Chicago between these two but I will guarantee you the majority of Cardinal fans have seen what they wanted to see in 1998 and they'd be more than happy to see the Cubs in the postseason. 
The Cardinals by the way have been mathematically eliminated at this point three and two the count on Marrero. I think a big tip of the cap to Steve Traxel for being able to maintain his composure throughout the the hugs and the salutations from Mark McGuire the 10 minute delay he's come back to retire well five in a row at that point he walks Marrero here. Let's go down to Steve Lyons who's standing by with the commissioner. All right, Joe, thank you very much. This is Bud Selig. And Bud, you are an owner of the Brewers. When Henry Aaron hit his 7-15th, can you compare that to this moment tonight? Well, that was a very dramatic moment. And, I hit, you know, it was remarkable then. And this has been, I don't think, Steve, in all the things I've seen in my 35 years in baseball, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like I've seen here the last three days. And tonight was magnificent. You think of the history and... And just the way uh, Mark handled it when he came over here and hugged the Merritt's family. Uh, this is a great moment for baseball for all of us involved. It's uh, it's been some summer and it got capped off tonight. So this is you know this is the type of moment that for two or three generations people remember where they were when he hit the home run. And you certainly see some emotion from Mark McGuire that we're not used to seeing in years past. You know, you really do. Both Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire have handled it well, and I, I really, I, I just can't tell you what a, uh, how, well, how much grace and dignity they they brought to the game. And uh, we're having a great year, but they certainly are two of the primary reasons. And it's not only their achievements, which are obviously, I mean, magnificent. It's the way they've handled themselves all along. Could this have happened in a better baseball city than St. Louis? Well, you know, I have to be a little careful that, but but because I said this at my press conference, but look, when you think of St. Louis and you go back to the Gas House Gang and you go back to Stan Musial and Red Chaining, who are sitting right here, and you think of all those years and the remarkable attendance they have. This is, if you were to ask, is there a better baseball town in America? The answer is no, there isn't. This town is absolutely remarkable, and its history proves it. All right, but I know that you've had a great time. We certainly have too. Let's send it back up to you guys in the booth. All right, Steve, thank you, and thank you to Bud Sealing. As the Shields takes a ball down and in, one and two. Well stated from the commissioner. Put it into perspective. It's been good, wholesome fun at the old ballpark. Good family entertainment. You know, that word that the commissioner used that we've kicked around here in the booth, but I think it's very apropos for both the gentlemen that have been pursuing this record is dignity. They both carry themselves in such a dignified, respectful manner. You can't help but root for him. Had another balk call. This time, Steve Fraxel is called for the balk, and uh, we will get a mild argument from Jim Riggleman. And Larry Poncino, the first base umpire, tries to give a long distance reason to Jim Riggleman as he heads out as to why the balk was called. This is our second balk of the night. One by Merker and one here by Traxel. Earlier in the game, you may remember Delano De Shields was picked off on a similar balk move from Steve Traxel. And that's what Bob was talking about earlier. When you break that left leg, you're committed to go home. It's a, he it, did it again, and a balk was called. It's a very subtle movement, and it's timed so perfectly that a lot of times Traxel and the other Cub right handed pitchers have been able to get away with it. That front knee buckles just enough and they spin make the throw to first base. Most base runners are trained to concentrate on that leg when they see that left leg buckle. They know the pitcher's going home. You know what it points out along with everything you're talking about is the mild argument that Tony La Russa put up back in the first inning. While it didn't change the call at the time changes the circumstances here because he planted the seed. In the head of Larry Poncino. A base hit to left field. Here comes Marrero. Glenn Allen Hill kicks it in left. A run scores. It's a 2 2 game on a base hit by Delano DeShields. Eli Marrero is a catcher who is a fast runner. A good jump at second base. He scores easily. I would imagine this will be a single RBI for DeShields and an error on Glen Allen Hill. And it is. First for Hill in a Cub uniform. Doesn't have the greatest reputation as a defensive outfielder. One of the reasons why after starting the year in Seattle he's no longer to the right of Ken Griffey Jr. And if there was any suspense it went out the window when Hill kicked it in left field. But Marrero is going to score either way. And now Tatis. With a go ahead run at second and one out. 2 2 game. 
Into left field, well hit. Back is Hill near the track to make the catch. Two down. In walks Mark McGuire. I know this is not going to be a popular decision, but if I'm Jim Ruggleman, I walk McGuire in a minute. Think nothing of it. In a second. Well, you're absolutely right. It would not be a popular decision, but I agree with you. The Cubs are they're trying to get into the postseason, and regardless of who's chasing what record, they have to do what's best to win a ball game. And right now, the obvious choice is to put McGuire on. You called it. The intentional walk to Mark McGuire will put two on with two out for Ray Langford. And it's almost as if to say, okay, you've had your history. That's right. Now we want the game. That's right. And that, to me, is logical thinking. In case you're just joining us, here's the way it sounded a little less than an hour ago. Record breaking home run number 62 off the bat of McGuire. See home run number 61 yesterday, and he doesn't have to miss another day of school. He can go back to California. He's seen home run number 62. Well, on 61 and 62 both, it appeared that uh, Matt McGuire <laughs> wanted to do that high five punch in the stomach thing oh, yeah. that the Cardinals do. And both times, Dad picked him up and ruined the fun. The Maris family picking up a photograph of Roger Maris in his Cardinal uniform. Roger Maris ended his major league career in this city in that uniform. Now look at Roger Maris. Langford waits two on two out and takes a ball. It's one and one. Sometimes in television you have to lay out and that's obviously what we were doing after the home run and Bob and I are talking between innings saying if there was ever a time to lay out that was it because I'll tell you we both almost lost it when he went to hug the Maris family. Then we almost lost him. <laughs> two on, two out, one ball, one strike. Strike two. One thing that we tried to give you, and we're very proud of our director, Bill Webb, and our producer, John Filippelli, but we wanted to give you one constant look after the swing at Mark McGuire going around the bases. There's plenty of time right after the home run to show reactions from the many factions around this ballpark. But we wanted to give you one clean view of Mark McGuire with that historic truck. Two on two out one and two the count on Langford. It's a two two game. Sixth inning. Traxel trying to keep it that way. Two balls two strikes. By the way, the walk to McGuire, the 148th walk handed to him this season, and the first intentional walk since August 12th, in case you wonder about teams pitching to Mark McGuire. Two on, two out, and the 2 2 to Langford. Full count, the runners will go. Keep talking about records. That man, Mark McGuire, is at a pace for 166 walks. The major league record is held by Babe Ruth with 170. And many, many people didn't think that could be done. Two on, two out, and Langford shoots one into deep right center at the track, at the wall. Three-run homer, 5-2, St. Louis.
You intentionally walk Mark McGuire, get to Langford, and Ray jumps up and bites you. The lower the pitch, the harder he hits it. That looked like a splitter. Ray Langford does not miss pitches around the knees. And that's part of the reason Mark McGuire has not been intentionally walked since August 12th. Ray Langford having a big year behind him in the order. You got to have that protection. Mark McGuire called Ray Langford, and this crowd wants a curtain call. Mark McGuire called Ray Langford the best protection he has ever had in any lineup he's been in. That was an off Broadway curtain, by the way. It was. Two out, nobody on, and a ball high to Gantt. One ball, no strikes on Gantt. Two out, nobody on. Three runs home and a 1 1 count. Well, it would be tough to second guess the move of Jim Ringelman. I mean, you've got the single season home run champ, first base <laughs> open, two out. I don't care who's hitting behind him. Strike two on Gantt. Langford is the man hitting behind him. And Langford goes deep. Tim, you mentioned Tony LaRusse's week. Losing his mother over the weekend. Jumping on a flight. Going to Tampa, Florida, which is where he is from, to attend the funeral services of his mother, Oliva. Getting on a plane, knowing that his father was doing well enough to let him attend this game. And he hustles to get back here and is in the dugout for Mark McGuire's 62nd home run. And Tony LaRusso wanted to be here for that. If all was well back home, all was well back home with his. 88 year old father and Tony La Russa, who was Mark McGuire's manager in 1987 when he came to the big leagues is here to see McGuire make history two and two on Gant. is empty two out and Gant gets into one to center deep center back to back six two Cardinals Historic night for Steve Traxel. The Cardinals lead 6 2. On the right, the Nissan Maxima. The left, the Nissan Pathfinder. With its 190 horsepower V6 engine, the Maxima delivers high performance on the road. The Pathfinder does the same when roads aren't an option. Which is better? You decide. Hurry to your Nissan retailer by September 30th for $2,000 cash back on the purchase of any remaining 98 model. The Home Run Race is heating up. Step up to the plate and play the Pepsi Major League Baseball Home Run Countdown. Go to in-store Pepsi displays, fill out an entry form, and if you guess the 98 Home Run Champions total, you'll be entered to win a trip for four to this year's World Series. Sometimes they have important meetings over two scoops of vanilla. 
Some days he's full of questions and she always seems to know. Sometimes she tells her secrets if she promises not to tell. Some days he's content to simply listen to them grow. These are a few of thousands of wonderful people who have three things in common. They all work at Walmart, they are all terrific grandparents, and they all make us very proud. If you buy only one video, make it the experience of a lifetime. Now you can take the voyage home, Titanic. Tonight, we had the perfect meal for us. The Olive Garden's never-ending pasta bowl. You pick any of the special pastas, and you get all the free refills you want, plus all the salad and breadsticks for $6.95. Good thing I was born hungry. The Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. Welcome back. A one-ball, one-strike count. Terry Mulholland into the game for the Cubs in relief of Traxel, who goes five and two-thirds innings. He's on the hook for the loss. Unless the Cubs rally, they trail 6-2. Two. two out, nobody on, and ball two down and away to Mabry, 2-1. And one. And unless the Cubs can catch uh, the Cardinals in nine innings and tie it, Kent Merker will be the winner. Double figures for Kent, telling us before the game that these people probably came to see him hit tonight. They're seeing home runs left and right. This one falls short off the bat of Mabry. <laughs> I hope we have his reaction. Boy, was he picked. These fans aren't. Neither is he. 6 2 Cardinals. I'm Christine Devine. Tonight, a sheriff's deputy is wounded in a gun battle with robbery suspects outside a house in Linwood. Details on Fox 11 News after the game. Welcome to Pendleton U, where the most popular class is urban legends. Something you heard about mixing pop rocks and soda? Supposedly your stomach burst. But this semester... Voila! Still alive. The lessons are going too far. Call 911! From the producer of I Know What You Did Last Summer... <laughs> Someone's taking all these urban legends and making them reality. <laughs> urban legend. Bloody Mary. <laughs> Rated R. Opens everywhere September 25th. An independent survey recently ranked LA Cellular number one in overall call quality. Better than AirTouch, PacBell, and Sprint. And naturally, being ranked the number one wireless service means a lot to us. But on September 28th, you'll find out what it means to our customers. Call 1-800-LA's best for the number one wireless service. And coming up next on Teller Tours is the home of Washington Mutual Teller Rob Berman. Oh, folks, we're in for a treat. Rob is apparently outside. <laughs> he looked right at me. I swear he did. Well, my life is complete. Let Washington Mutual make a fan out of you. Washington Mutual. Join the club. Now at Hollywood Video, rent Titanic for five days. Did he say five days? Winner of 11 Academy Awards. Yours to treasure. Yours to own. Now, take the voyage home on video cassette. Titanic. You can stop applauding now. Rent Titanic for five days at Hollywood Video. Hey, man, don't have a cow. Catch The Simpsons tonight at 8.30 on Fox 11. Well, tonight's Skyview coverage from the Bud One Airship is brought to you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser. There's a look at the Bud One Airship, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Wish you guys and gals were down here, high above. As tonight, Mark McGuire hits number 62, a 341-foot Laser line drive over the wall and left. And Rick Crowshore is the new Cardinal pitcher just recalled. J.D. Drew stays in the game and takes over in left field. And the reports on him in the outfield are just sit back and watch. One ball, one strike. They say he can play the outfield like few, like few have been able to play the outfield. They like him eventually in center field. 
So Drew stays in the game and Crowshaw will bat in the spot vacated by Gant. Here's a fly ball into right center field off the bat of Jose Hernandez and into the glove of Mabry one away. Well last inning and this is now a game of reactions. Mark McGuire's reaction to the Ron Gant home run which made it a 6 2 game then Mabry thought all right we're going back to back to back it fell short and here's his reaction <laughs> as he's in two deep drives but so far tonight is 0 for 3. That's the maddest anybody's been tonight. And he got over it quickly. Yeah. Here's Grace. One out nobody on. The seventh inning stretch is coming but that is pretty much redundant. I mean it's it's already happened. It's happened one time after another throughout this game and maybe they'll rest. <laughs> seventh inning rest. Yeah, stay seated. Huh? Yeah. One out nobody on Grace up Sosa next. And a strike to Grace from Crowshore who features that good fastball and the screwball from a right handed pitcher. You will know more and more about Steve Traxel. You have to give him a lot of credit here tonight. He could have made it look like he was pitching to McGuire. He came after him. He got him in the first inning on a 3 0 pitch. McGuire grounded out, didn't get him in the fourth inning. There's a look at Steve, 27 year old, born in Oxnard, California, lives in Mesa, Arizona. He has a career high 14 wins in 1998, but Right now he is in essence the new Tracy Stallard as the pitch is up and away to Grace to make it three and two. Tracy Stallard giving up Roger Maris's 61st home run back in 1961 in game 162. That's up and away for a one out walk. The Cubs need a rally here and they have the right combination a walk to Grace and Sosa coming to the plate. Sammy who gets yet another standing ovation here. This night would be complete if Sosa hits a home run. With 58 and 140 RBIs. And a ball from Crowshore. The Cubs have 43 come from behind victories on the season. And one of the marks of this 1998 Chicago Cubs ball club. They're never out of a game, especially when you've got Sammy Sosa in the middle of your lineup. Broken back into left center field. A late break by J.D. Drew, but he's there to put it away. Sosa is retired. He is now one for three. Tomorrow night, Fox Sports Net will air a special on the incredible home run chase called Breaking the Record Home Run History. That's tomorrow night at 6.30 and 11 p.m. local time on the Fox Sports Net. We know how that show is going to end tomorrow night. Into center field, Glenn Allen Hill gets a base hit. Grace stops at second. It's two on, two out. And the Cubs hoping for a big rally and they have red hot Gary Gaetti who came in with a 383 average in 18 games with the Cubs and tonight two out of three. There is a big difference between breaking a record and breaking the record and tonight Mark McGuire broke the record that most people think is the most revered in any sport. Home runs in a single season. You definitely get the feeling they're going to have to change that number before the end of the season. Maybe several times. Everybody has to look around them and wonder what as Lance Painter gets ready. 
what memorabilia they can take away from this night. Somebody's going to get that banner up there. You know that. <laughs> right. Might be hung outside Mark's offseason home back in California. Look good in my basement. <laughs> two on, two out. Gaetti takes a ball low from Crowshore. Final score the Phillies embarrassing the Mets 16 to 4. So the Cubs, at the very worst, will be tied with the Mets at the end of the night in the wild card chase. And there the Mets, a half game out if the Cubs fail to rally, they'll be back even. But That's then right. you start looking at the Giants again the Giants starting the night tonight now two games back and they are leading at San Diego one to nothing in the first inning there's a strike and it's two and one on Gaetti two on two out in San Francisco San Diego gave Kirk Reeder the left hander against Andy Ashby Nomo was the starter in the Mets game today not sure exactly how many of those 16 runs were his. Three and one on Gaetti. As Crowshore is making this more and more interesting. With a 300 hitter Morandini on deck. A walk to Grace, a hit by Hill. Morandini next, but right now the 3 1 to Gaetti. Pops it up, back behind the plate, and it's out of play. and the Cardinals will head to Cincinnati after tonight's game and that'll be a fun flight. Mark McGuire wouldn't even need an airplane tonight. Here's a 3 2 pitch just missed off the inside corner. The bases are loaded with two out for Morandini and that might be it for Crowshore. This 3 2 pitch just inside to Gary Gaetti. Could have been a little low good call. And with Morandini coming up, Crowshore, who was just reinstated on the Cardinal roster, as the rosters have been able to expand now in September, cannot get through a full inning. We're in the seventh. The Cubs are rallying, trying to get back in it. Lance Painter will enter. Quit hogging the cashews. I'm not. R2. I'm not. R2. I'm not. Animal. It's a cat. It's a beaver. It's a brown cat. It's a beaver. I think it's a marmot. That was a beaver. Are beavers nice? Yes. Look at him. There he is. Oh, yeah. He looked at me. I'm going to give He's him a nut. He's cute, isn't he? No. Beavers don't like nuts. Huh? I've never seen a beaver eat a nut. I've never seen a Everyone beaver. Everyone loves Planters nuts. Fresh roasted taste. And they're cholesterol free. Oh, he's good. He's very good. Planners, relax. Go nuts. Think that'll fit in the van? Yo, down here. I'm the Brooklyn Bridge. You think you could take me? You want a piece of me, huh? Let's go. You and me. Right now. The undeniably smooth. Ever luxurious ES300. The road is calling. Answer it. I got your fancy suspension right here. My dad taught me what it means to be a true fan. What it means to come out and give 110%. Right, Dad? Yeah! <laughs> I'm, I'm more the quiet thing. Oh, yeah! <laughs> well, the cold doesn't bother me so much. It's the chili dogs. Oh! That's why I bring out the Rolaid. Rolaid starts to neutralize acid in less than 10 seconds, getting you back on your game fast. It's just like Grandpa always says. You gotta be your best out here. Rolaids. R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Spells relief. Mom doesn't make it out to the games. I don't know why. What happens when you break the rules? Let's break some and find out. FX Breakout Original Programming. Breakthrough Series. Breaking the Mold. FX. Please, watch responsibly. Where else can you see and act like this? Look who's going for the record now. Alan McBeal, season premiere Monday at 9, 8 Central. Lance Painter takes over, third pitcher of the night for St. Louis, second of the inning, and he inherits a bases loaded two out Mickey Morandini situation. 
Morandini always a tough hitter, but particularly with runners on base, he'll battle, he'll hang in there tough. Although it looks like Matt Mieske has come out into the on-deck circle to hit for Mickey Morandini. Well, we praised one move. I have to question this one. And Mieske might step in and pound a grand slam with the bases loaded two out. And he is a 300 hitter, but Morandini is a season-long accomplished 300 hitter doing a lot of that against left-handed pitching, and I don't... It is a strange move unless uh, unless there is an injury that we don't know about to Mickey Morandini. Morandini was in the on deck circle and I am going to go out on a limb and say there's nothing physically wrong with him. But it's Mieske now as Jim Riggleman goes to the right hander bases loaded two out facing Painter and taking a ball high. Matt Mieske has spent the better part of his career in Milwaukee. And in his first year with the Cubs. There are his career numbers with the bases loaded. He's a 300 hitter. He ju did just get recalled from Triple A Iowa. So Morandini is lifted here in the seventh with the bases loaded, two out, and that's low ball two, two and zero. Oh. Morandini is 0 for seven lifetime against Lance Painter. If you want statistics to back you up, but you can see Mickey shaking his head over there. Doesn't believe in those computer printouts. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Bases loaded, two out. Cubs need a hit. Off the mask of Marrero, 2 and 1. You think uh, being a catcher is easy, huh? A lot of people think uh, shots like that don't hurt, but they do. It'll rattle your cage, cross your eyes for a few minutes. Now the 2 1 pitch to Mieske with the bases loaded two out into center field Lankford over to get it the Cubs threaten but do not score they leave three and have stranded 11 bottom of the order coming up for the Cardinals on a historic night in St. Louis. My favorite film well as a student filmmaker I naturally gravitate towards the classics like what oh well there's so many. Uh, you know the one with the uh, the guy and the mother, and they're on the thing, and it's it's raining a lot. Need to get reacquainted with the classics? Try this. If it's not a new release, it's a blockbuster favorite. Choose from thousands of titles and keep them for five evenings. I love films with a lot of rain in them. <laughs> yeah. Six yards of hunter green, two yards of gold, stick pins, heavy duty thread, and some of those iron on transfers. <laughs> One official Major League Baseball, nine dollars. New ball, nine dollars. New ball, nine dollars. New ball, new ball, new ball, nine dollars. New windshield, one hundred dollars. Sixty-two, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's Mastercard, official card of Major League Baseball, and believer that records were made to be broken. Here we are in this simple, majestic setting. None of the usual interruptions. Nobody around to distract us from introducing AT&T One Rate Plus. Now, the key point, the thing to remember, is that every call you make from home with One Ray Plus, every call, day and night, 10 cents a minute. Did you say 10 cents a minute, dude? How do they find me? AT&T One Ray Plus, 10 cents a minute, anytime. Call 1-800-41-RATE to enroll. This special edition of Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Blockbuster Video, where you'll find more copies of new releases. Go to Blockbuster and go home happy. Terry Mulholland goes back to work. New second baseman is Jason Maxwell. He's just called up from Triple A Iowa and he gets to play in this historic game. As Luis Ordaz, the shortstop for the Cardinals, then Drew, then Eli Marrero will bat. For St. Louis leading 6 2 in the seventh. 
They pinch hit for Morandini and now have to replace him defensively. And Ordaz behind on the count on one. Here's J.D. Drew. From the Northern League to a new contract to Double-A Little Rock to Triple-A Memphis to the Cardinals. What a year. And to a major league debut on a night in which Mark McGuire hits number 62. And prior to that, laying out uh, a professional ball for a year because the Philadelphia Phillies couldn't sign him, couldn't get together with numbers. One and one, Ordaz. Chops it foul. Now, I hope J.D. knows it's not like this every night around here. Yeah, right. <laughs> Cardinals, for the most part, are penciling him in for a starting spot in their outfield next year. And it's a big topic of discussion around here because of the impending free agency. And part of Brian Jordan, who may leave at the end of the year. Two and two on Ordez. Well it's going to be a tough go for J.D. Drew the remainder of this season and into next year as you get a look at Brian Jordan sitting this one out tonight. J.D. Drew really alienated himself from a lot of the major league players by holding out not signing the contract. Many veterans felt that he needed to prove himself before he cashed in with the big payday but Drew stuck to his guns and here he is in the most historic game in the history of baseball. A lot of people thought Tim that it was his agent Scott Boris that was driving that train J.D. Drew and his family will tell you it was J.D. Drew and his family that were driving that train and it wasn't Boris trying to make a statement the 2 2 to Ordaz is to the second baseman Maxwell just into the game his first put out goes without a hitch one away and the final number from what I understand a little over eight million dollars as a bonus that is whether he makes it or not. And, uh, Bonuses have gone up since I was playing. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Is it hypocritical at all for major leaguers to make the comments that some made publicly about J.D. Drew with regard to holding out for the money? Perhaps. Yeah, that's a good I mean, point. Come yeah. on. Into left center field off the bat of Drew. Lance Johnson to his right, two out. Well, this isn't TGIF, and this is no average neighborhood. Catch the series premiere of Living in Captivity and the season premiere of Getting Personal. It's all a part of Wild Thing Friday, starting at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Friday night. Two out, nobody on, and here's Morero. And that's foul for strike one. Renee Latchman makes a friend with a souvenir on this night. Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire will hit again. McGuire, at the very least, will be third up at the bottom of the eighth. And Sosa, even if the first four Cubs are retired in the eighth inning and the first and the ninth, he'll be the batter in the top of the ninth inning. And we again hope to talk to Mark McGuire right after the ball game. So stay with us for those words as Marrero strikes out looking and we slip into the eighth inning. Mulholland does his job. Eighth inning Cubs need some runs. They trail the Cardinals 6 2. As the beer man, I get bombarded from all sides. So to get your icy cold cause light first, it's a good idea to stand out from the crowd. Hey, beer man! Hey, take the painted guy. Now that tells me he appreciates the frost food taste born of the Rockies. Yo, beer man! Ah, oh, the giant finger guy. It's as if he's saying, hey, beer man, Coors Light is number one in my book. Yeah! Yeah! Nice touch. Hey, beer man. Of course, I've always preferred the subtle approach. Coors Light! There's something about Mary. It has come to our attention that audiences are laughing so hard at this movie, they're missing many of the jokes. This sucks. We apologize for this inconvenience and offer the following suggestion. See the film over. I must have blocked it out of my head. Ah! And over. It shaves better than the next. And over. What about Brett Favre? Again. He's in love with Mary, too. There's still something about Mary. Great it on. Now play. Jeans are the perfect jeans to wear when you're going out for a little seafood. 
with your best buddy. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Wrangler jeans. Perfect when you're training your dog. Or when your dog is training you. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. For the best performances in a starring role, American Century's five-star conservative equity funds. Call 1-800-660-0092. Aikman clashes with Elway in a showdown for the ages. It's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Here is our Toyota game summary. Mark McGuire hits his 62nd home run of the season. An all-time record. Period. What more do you want? The Cubs want a lot more. They trail 6-2 and they get a leadoff base hit from Scott Service. On our Toyota game summary, Sammy Sosa won for three with a single and a walk. And everybody around here pulling for a Sosa home run. Mark Grace, an RBI single in the first. Guy Eddy did the same. And the Cardinals, five runs in the sixth inning. Including home runs by Langford and Gant, they went back to back. A look at the Bud One airship overhead here in St. Louis, downtown St. Louis, the world headquarters of Anheuser Busch, and Buzz Budweiser is the official beer of Major League Baseball. They help bring you the pictures from above. A leadoff hit, and now Manny Alexander is at the plate pinch hitting, and he takes a strike. Joe Bob, I'll tell you what I want. I want to see Sammy Sosa batting with the bases loaded, two outs, and hit a grand slam home run. Hey, that's a, this is a movie, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly feels like it, doesn't it? it? Does. Are we collectively Joe Bob now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Joe Bob. All right. well, I'll take it. <laughs> Bobby Joe, Joe Bob. Depends what part of the country you're in. That's, that's right. right. One on, nobody out. A leadoff hit by service. Manny Alexander, a 234 hitter. Grounds to first, past McGuire. DeShields, great effort. But too late, base hit. The first two are on for the Cubs here in the eighth inning. Great effort by DeShields. Painter got over there, but the speed of Alexander, it's a clean infield single all the way. And once that grounder got past Mark McGuire, it was going to be a very difficult play for the second baseman who's off balance, making the awkward throw, trying to hit the moving target in the pitcher covering first base. And as you mentioned, Alexander's speed just too much. Well, here you go, Tim. We're getting there. Two yeah. on, nobody out, top of the order. Here's a look, and you will see that Alexander was safe. Lance Johnson takes the ball. Lance is 0 for 4. He's fly to center, fly to left, line to right. And grounded out. Action starts for the Cardinals in their bullpen, and there's action for the Cubs in their bullpen. We got action. Two on, nobody out, and Johnson takes a strike. One and one. Don Wengert, the right hander, getting ready for Chicago. Two on, nobody out, and a one ball, one strike count on Johnson. And a visit to Painter while they get John Frascatore ready in the Cardinal bullpen. By the way, after tonight's game is over, there is postseason in baseball this year, right? There is. Right, the World Series. It will happen. Uh -huh. Wild card, National League Championship Series, American League. You know, you would think this is the seventh game of the World Series. That's the feeling it has to me. I would agree with that and I would also add that as Johnson takes a pitch low to make it two and one this season is setting up for uh, an extremely exciting postseason and World Series and of course could be blamed for self-serving reasons for saying that but I think people who watch this game day in and day out believe that two on nobody out two balls and a strike on Johnson and two and two is all of a sudden the high strike is being called. 
which is to the delight of Lance Painter. <laughs> Since he's thrown a couple pitches up near the top of the zone. Now this entire baseball season has been kind of a can you top this. Yeah. Yeah. Good numbers for Johnson with runners in scoring position. He has a man out there. Lays off and it's three and two. Ken, Ken Griffey Jr. satisfying the Pacific Northwest with 50 home runs. San Francisco with a possible wild card. The San Diego Padres with a marvelous ball club. Houston a very dangerous club. Off the plate the Cardinals will get only one. The Atlanta the Braves are the Atlanta Braves again. We'll put that on hold and we'll show you Tim and Bob and the rest of our viewers the reaction from across the country when Mark McGuire connected the vision board here at Veterans Stadium. Steinbrenner. That is obviously the view from a big screen, probably a Fenway, with the Yankees and Red Sox playing there, and George Steinbrenner standing and applauding. Now, as the runners have advanced to second and third in a four run game in the eighth inning, the Cardinals will make a pitching change. Frascatori stomps in. Hernandez, Grace, and Sosa coming up. Wondrous surprises. A magic voyage that begins with a Walt Disney World vacation, then sails to our own private island in the Bahamas. Disney Cruise Line. Discover uncharted magic. Next Tuesday, one of these potential victims will die. Your dad got blown up. On the season premiere of King of the Hill. Then, she's the breakout personality of the new TV season. The guy who didn't tip me last week wants a glass of ice. You know what to do. The series premiere of Costello. It all starts next Tuesday at 8, 7 central on Fox. Well, Sammy Sosa, Tim, probably thinking along the lines that you were earlier, hoping he gets a chance, and there is a way he could bat in this inning, representing the tying run. If Jose Hernandez or Mark Grace gets on base, then Sosa would be the batter with the bases loaded. There it is, 62 to 58. Like a bad high school football game. Yeah, and if that does happen. <laughs> Bad defensive yeah. high school football game. But it took uh, Sammy Sosa so long to hit a grand slam home run, and then he hit two in a period of three games, in two games, back to back. Well, while John Frascatore gets ready, you look at his numbers. We have so many people to thank for making this possible, for showing this historic night to this nation on national TV, network, over the air, national television. We want to thank, of course, the senior coordinating producer of Major League Baseball on Fox and the producer of today's game, John Filippelli. Our director, unparalleled in this business, is Bill Webb. The senior producer of the studio show, Scott Ackerson, produced by Gary Lang on a week-by-week -week basis, directed by Bob Levy, assisted there by Jennifer Love. And the senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown, the executive producers of Fox Sports, David Hill and Ed Gorin. And boy, have they made this happen. And today's technical producer, Dave Hill, technical director, Mitch Riggin. Special thanks to Lance Garrett, Derek Manning, Mike Fitzgerald, and as always, our hats are off to Steve Horn, who does the best job in any booth across the country assisting us. Second and third, one out, and the pitch to Jose Hernandez is up high from John Frascatore. It's nice when your job is your privilege. And it has been that tonight, hasn't it? It indeed has. Lou Brock. Hall of Famer number 20 and a former member of both of these two teams the Chicago Cubs traded to the Cardinals and it was greatness after that number two in the all time stolen base list and he with 3000 career hits second and third one out in the 1 0 pitch to Hernandez that'll get a run home or Daz makes the play at first out of the RBI ground out second out of the inning and it's now a six to three Cardinal lead. 
Lewis Clark Brock traded to the St. Louis Cardinals on June 15, 1964. Biggest debacle as far as trades are concerned in Chicago Cub history. And Lou went on number 20, went on to be a Hall of Famer. What a player. Wow. Now runner at third with two out for Grace, and he takes a strike over the outside corner from Frascatori. Grace tonight has been on base three times, two for three plus a walk. One and one. Lou Brock and Bob Gibson, both a couple of Hall of Famers, special instructors for the Cardinals. A couple of bad guys to have for special instructors. And Stan Musial's the team musician <laughs> with the harmonica into left field off the bat of Grace. Back to get it, J.D. Drew, and the inning is over. The Cubs get a run. They creep one run closer. We'll see McGuire in the bottom of this eight, 6 3, St. Louis. Joan London for Clarity. In my line of work, you've got to be ready. Ready to hit your mark. That's why my doctor prescribed Claritin Ready Tabs for my seasonal allergies. It dissolves on your tongue without water, so you can take it anytime, any place. One tablet means 24-hour non-drowsy relief from seasonal allergies, and it's safe for children as young as six. There's a low occurrence of side effects, including headache, drowsiness, fatigue, and dry mouth. Action! Talk to your doctor about Claritin Ready Tabs. Call 1-800-CLARITIN. He was a law student whose life was finally coming together until his best friend got in trouble with the mob. Now, he's got to play the game of his life to save him. Matt Damon, Edward Norton, Rounders, Rated R. Starts Friday in theaters everywhere. For consistent quality, choose Meineke. Nationwide, you get the same great service. It's like seeing a familiar face. Hi there. Told you. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot. But you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. I don't want to pull over. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Here. The air is on. That's right. Roll down your window. No, roll off your window. Introducing Solara, an entirely different kind of Camry. It's for you. This special edition of Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Blockbuster Video, where you'll find more copies of new releases. Go to Blockbuster and go home happy. By National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you the three most important words are, hey, beer, man. And by the Toyota Solar Coupe, an entirely different kind of Camry. It's for you. Welcome back to the ballpark. The name of the ballpark, Bush Stadium in the city of St. Louis, Missouri. And tonight, Tuesday, September 8th, 1998, Mark McGuire broke the single season home run record of 61 home runs, hit by Roger Maris in 1961. He has 62 and counting, and I think the and counting is going to leave a lot of drama for the rest of this season. Uh, I don't I don't know how you could possibly predict where he's going to end up. I mean he, uh, the pressure is off now. He could fall into uh, you know a slump and finish the year on a down note. He could uh, respond exactly the opposite way. The pressure's off. He's relaxed. He's having fun. He may go on a tear. But whatever number he ends up at, I have a feeling it's going to stand for quite some time. And I tell you, I think Sammy Sosa is going to be relentless for the rest of the season because the Cubs have something to fight for. A ground ball to first off the bat of the Shields. One away as Grace takes care of it. New pitcher is Don Wengert. Takes over for Paul Holland. Third of the night. The numbers for Wengert, a record of one and three. Here's Tatis, 0 for 3, hitting in front of McGuire tonight. Manny Alexander now at second base as they. Take Jason Maxwell back out of the lineup. One out, nobody on, and a strike is poured into Tatis. Well, soon I will be leaving you two. Headed down to hopefully corral Mark McGuire for an interview after this game, and that's going to be. I, I want your 
best wishes as you send me down there. <laughs> Good luck to you. You may never see me again. Good luck to you. Okay. <laughs> We're behind you winter time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh and two on Tatis. He left in the eighth and was never heard from again. One and two. Well, I can't help but think every time I see Matthew McGuire down there as the bat boy, I have a son about his age, and when he goes back to school, whether it be tomorrow or the day after, it has to turn in that composition. What I did on my Labor Day vacation. Well, two and two. Let's see. I got to fly on a jet. Go to St. Louis and watch my dad set the all time single season home run record in Major League Baseball. I think you'll get an A. Yeah, he'll end it with any questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, the questions will be put to Mark McGuire after this one as Tati strikes out looking and in walks Mark McGuire, the hero of the night right now, the hero of the 1998 season. One more standing ovation here in the eighth inning for Mr. 62. Well, from here on out, it's not going to be any more. Is he going to break it? It's going to be how many is he going to hit? Since. The record, number 62, he's been intentionally walked in the sixth inning. An enormous pressure since spring training began. Mark, do you think you have a chance? And then he opened the season with four home runs in four games to tie Willie Mays, the only other player to do that. Two out, nobody on, and a 1 1 count on McGuire. Yeah, he's been hearing this since really the end of last year. Yeah. When he ended up with 58. First question of spring training for Mark McGuire. You think you could break the record? <laughs> Two and one. I asked him a question. I did a sit down interview with Mark McGuire for the Fox Sports Net spring training. He said, I don't want to answer. I said, the one question everybody wants to ask you, you won't answer. And he said, well, I figure I have to average 10 a month. And if I do that, I'll do it and if I have 50 by the start of September I'll have a chance two and two. We would like to welcome those of you who have been watching the Cincinnati Reds and the Houston Astros. On FX. This is what could be the final at bat tonight for Mark McGuire who has 62 home runs. The 2 2 pitch from Wengert. Full count. Perfect example in this at bat against Don Wangert of how pitchers try to get Mark McGuire out. Sweeping breaking balls away off the outside corner and high fastballs up above the letters. Here it comes on three and two. A two out walk. So after the record an intentional walk. And now an unintentional walk. But if you want to get a asterisk out for that one you can go ahead. <laughs> May be unintentional in the books, but Wengert was not going to groove one on three and two. So the walk continues the inning, and it ends the night for Don Wengert with Langford coming up. He's already burned the Cubs tonight once. And Chicago will go to the left hander here in the eighth. Mitsubishi Galant. Totally new styling, nicely equipped at $17,990. Your toothbrush can clean the surfaces of teeth, but may not get to the spaces between. Listerine can. Listerine flows into the tiny spaces between teeth to kill germs and help prevent the gum disease, gingivitis. Get in there and fight with Listerine. Look, they make olive oil. Take a picture here. Okay. All right. Bonjour. Oh, hi. How are you? Is this your business? Yes. Oh, we have our own business too. 
Yes, yes, we have three stores in Ohio. Ohio. We sell it Ohio. And California, and Canada, and Argentina, and Australia, and the Mexico. They're on the internet. How can they afford it? Break through to the new world of Mach 3 from Gillette. The first triple blade shaving system. Three blades specially positioned to shave progressively closer. You take one stroke, it takes three. So you don't have to shave the same area over and over, which means less irritation. Three blades, fewer strokes, less irritation. Mach 3 from Gillette. Here's some hot news from Domino's. The new Domino's Heat Wave. The first bag that works like a portable oven, delivering hotter, tastier pizza to your door and a bigger smile to your face. Now a large without the three toppings is just $9.99. If you had a neighbor like Carmine Santucci, Got soap? You'd be living in captivity. Friday at 8, 7 central on Fox. Well, folks, at the end of the game, we hope to speak with Mark McGuire and recap his magical season. Then, for the most extensive coverage of this home run chase and all the postgame activities, turn to Fox Sports News Primetime. Following this game on your Fox Sports Net regional channel. McGuire is at first after the walk, and the batter is Ray Lankford. Lankford is one out of three, but the one is a big one. A two out, three run home run is last time up. Guys, how much can the Babe stand? Mark McGuire passes him. Ruth's record of 60 home runs stood for 34 years until Maris in 61. So he passed him long ago. And now he's on pace for 167 walks. Ruth's record there is the major league record of 170. That could be eclipsed, which would be incredible that he could do both in the same season. Because Babe Ruth did not hit 60 home runs and set the National League or the American League record major league record for walks in the same season. He walked 170 times in 1923 and homered 60 times of course in 1927. One on two out Langford a big swing and a miss against Felix Heredia. Heredia the numbers he was a trading deadline acquisition by the Cubs from the world champion Marlins. By the way they they too have been mathematically eliminated somewhere close to the all star break. One on two out a ball and two strikes Langford waits. Two and two. John Frascatore is on deck and right now there is no action in the Cardinal bullpen although Acevedo was up earlier he has been the closer for St. Louis lately and it might be his ninth inning. Here's the 2 2 to Langford. That should end eight innings for the night. Lance Johnson staggers under it has it McGuire is left the Cardinals strand a runner in the eighth inning and we go to the ninth. Three outs away from the end of this one, 6 3, St. Louis. Hey, beer man! I'm the fastest beer man in Texas. That fan is thirsting for a cold frost brew Coors Light, and I'm the guy that's gonna give it to him, punk. This game has passed you by, old timer. I'll give this fan a cup of ice cold Rocky Mountain refreshment faster than you can blink. <laughs> All right, two beers. You still got it, old man. Not bad yourself, kid. They come from different cultures. Ah, bitch boys. Don't you ever touch a black man's radio, boy. They are played by different rules. <laughs> FBI, I need this motorcycle. Get up. But on a case this big... <laughs> We're gonna get your daughter back safe and sound. They speak the same language. We can hang in my crib. I will show you my hood. What the hell did you just say? Jackie Chan. Wow. Chris Tucker. Rush Hour. Which one of y'all kicking? Ready PG-13. Starts Friday, September 18th. Because of our passion for design and engineering, our vehicles speak for themselves. And recently, others have had some great things to say about our quality, too. Sebring Convertible. Total Quality Award. 
town and country, total quality award. Cirrus, best in class and initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. Concord, best in class and initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Hey there, now I got something here that's downright fun. My new popcorn chicken. Crunchy morsels of tender white meat. Hurry down to KFC, try my new popcorn chicken for $1.99. At KFC, we do chicken right. It's got spills. Whoa! Chills. Thrills. Not to mention a few fleas. <laughs> Walt Disney's classic, Lady and the Tramp. Coming to video Tuesday, September 15th. Get your paws on it. See why critics are calling that 70s show the false funniest sitcom. Bitchin'. Eric. Not in front of your mother. <laughs> Sunday after The Simpsons on Fox. On a night as historic as this, that's uh, all the Cardinals need is a change in their battery. Tom Lampkin, the new catcher, and the new pitcher, Juan Acevedo, as Joe Buck is making his way down to the dugout to talk to Mark McGuire. Well, Tom Lampkin was one of those guys Joe mentioned earlier about Oh, when a pitcher has a no hitter going guys on the bench try to stay away from him they don't mention it and throughout McGuire's chase of the home run record the, the guys on the Cardinals bench have tried to avoid the topic as much as possible and Tom Lampkin one of his teammates who refused to shake his hand I'm not going to shake your hand until you break the record Lampkin broke down last night or however on number 61 right, decided right. to go ahead and shake his hand and now today could officially congratulate him on breaking the record told us before the game that he did not know what he was going to do tonight he didn't think he could stick to it just sitting over on the bench idly Well, here's Sammy Sosa homerless on the evening 58 on the year against Juan Acevedo who can be wild and the crowd Yelling for Sosa. Just missed that pitch. Nothing in one to Sammy Sosa. Boy, a home run cut there from Sammy Sosa on a low fastball. We've mentioned it throughout the broadcast, throughout the summer. Sosa, very good low ball hitter. That one about the middle of the thighs. Generates every bit as much power from a much smaller frame. Ball one, one and one now to Sammy Sosa, leading off the ninth, 6 3 Cardinals. Consecutive series with a home run. 15 in a row, so if he does not get a home run here and the Cubs do not overtake the Cardinals, then this will be the first time since early August that Sammy has not homered in a series. One ball, two strikes as McGuire looks on. Tougher pitch from Acevedo outside with the fastball. Still one and two. You wonder if Sammy Sosa has a sense of relief that McGuire's finally broken the record. It's a good point. High ball two, two and two. Now Sammy can get back to business of trying to win the wild card berth and postseason play for the Chicago Cubs. Two guys from totally different cultures. And so sit down on strikes. The one out here in the ninth inning and this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and he's here tonight and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Round of applause another standing ovation for Sammy Sosa. This one lined by Glenn Allen Hill to left center field and Hill's going to have his second hit of the game. He doubles with one out so the Cubs still very much alive here in the ninth inning. Gary Gaetti coming up. We talked about Sosa earlier, mentioning that he was from the little bastion of baseball strength down in the Dominican Republic, San Pedro de Macorís. There was a marvelous article in the New York Times by Larry Roeder today, talking about uh, when the games are on down there in the streets in San Pedro de Macorís, they're as empty as when the government 
decrees a curfew. <laughs> They're all inside listening to what Sammy has done. Lined hard over the head of the left fielder J.D. Drew, but what Joe Buck said earlier, he got a little glimpse of with a great jump on a ball hit by Gaetti. Two out. And on one of the toughest balls for an outfielder to play, that line drive hit directly at you, and Drew, as you mentioned, a great jump, immediately broke back toward the wall and was able to make that reaching catch almost at the warning track. And Orlando Merced will be the pinch hitter for Jason Maxwell, the second baseman. Merced, formerly with the Pittsburgh Pirates, most recently with the Toronto Blue Jays, and exclusively as a left-handed batter. Now he was a switch hitter when he came up. Two out, Glenn Allen Hill on second. Six to three, St. Louis. Check swing, foul ball. Nothing in one to Orlando Merced. Hot off the press, the Bulldog edition. Brindley and I have just received the Bulldog edition of the St. Louis Post Dispatch that says unbelievable class 62. What a remarkable year for Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa. One ball, two strikes to Orlando Merced. Joe Buck is working his way down through the bowels of Bush Stadium. As a matter of fact, he's right behind home plate right now. He will have Mark McGuire. And perhaps some words from Sammy Sosa too. Fans on their feet on this historic night. Punch foul. That delays further elation here in St. Louis. What thoughts must be running through his mind right now. Curveball way high, two and two now to Merced. Well, Mark has been so accommodating to the press. Post game media sessions after every ball game that go on and on and on. And I imagine this is one that he's looked forward to and is anxious to put behind it. Finally, with a chance to be somewhat pensive. Inside, full count now to Merced. On deck batter, Scott Service, and should Merced get aboard, and Service will represent the potential tying run. Mark McGuire is homered for the 62nd time in the 1998 baseball season. He did it in his second at bat, a laser shot, 341 feet from home plate. Tap toward third, this could be it. What a play by Tatis to end it. We are planning and Joe is down on the field right now. We're planning to have an interview with Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa will be talking to Joe Buck and Steve Lyons. Winning pitcher Kent Merker, his record 10 and 11. Losing pitcher Steve Traxel, his record 14 and 8. Joe talked about it earlier for Steve Traxel. He will be forever remembered and baseball history is giving up Mark McGuire's 62nd home run a solo shot here tonight. I'm going to get one more look at the historic home run off the bat of Mark McGuire as Tim mentioned and Joe earlier 
an absolute laser beam to left field. The only question was, is it high enough to clear the fence? Obviously it was. <laughs> I still love that shot. Dave McKay bringing McGuire back to make him touch first base because he was so happy and emotionally jumped over the bag. What a trip. Was Mark McGuire with a big hug to his son Matthew after crossing home plate. A hug for catcher Scott Service. A hug for the Maris family. You get the feeling Mark McGuire would have hugged every person in this stadium tonight if time allowed. with his parents now. <laughs> Enough emotions for you tonight, partner? Oh, man, I'll tell you. It's been hard to talk at times. You can only imagine the feelings that must be running through that young man right now. I think we're about to find out as we go down to Joe Buck and Mark McGuire on the field. Joseph? All right, Tim, thank you very much. You've hugged everybody else, pal. I want one. Give me a hug. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ken Yu. I know it's been difficult all year to describe what it's like for you to go through what you've been through. Can you describe the feeling of relief and how you feel right now after becoming the single season home run champion? I tell you what, it, I was so shocked because I didn't think the ball had enough to get out. And when I, when I saw the ball leave, I looked up and Dave McKay was in my way and I sort of missed first base, had to come back and touch it. And then, you know, I don't remember anything after that. And then I come in and everybody's hugging me and I lift up my son and, and, and I'm hugging and I go over and talk to the Marises and, and I, I just, uh, I was numb. And then I said, I still got to play the game, you know? And it's like, I, oh my God, I can't believe this. But, it's an absolutely incredible feeling. It's, um, I can honestly say I did it. I want to uh, say in front of the world, it has been such a pleasure watching you conduct yourself on the field and off the field. This is the headline, unbelievable class. He's in a class of his own on the field, and why don't I welcome in his parents right now, John and Ginger McGuire. Uh, you two ought to be awfully proud of the young man that you uh, helped put together and give to the world. John, uh, first you, can you describe uh, what you're feeling tonight? Uh, Ginger and I are deliriously happy over Mark's accomplishment. I mean, it's uh, just phenomenal what he's achieved this year, starting with spring, spring training and setting his mind to, do, to accomplish this goal. It's beyond our wildest dreams to be here tonight. Um, last night, he hit the 61st on my 61st birthday. Tonight, he hit his uh, 62nd for the people of St. Louis, as he said. What a class act. A class act, and uh, Mom, I, I know you don't, I know you don't like this, but just a quick word about Mark and how proud you are. It's just an incredible moment in the history of baseball, and I'm just so, so very proud of my son. Thank you. Love you guys. It just Love seems you. so unreal. Do you want to pitch me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's real. Congratulations. And for you, uh, my friend, you realize, and this is the last question I'll let you go, you realize what you have done for the game of baseball, don't you? You flung this game on your back, and you've taken it for a ride in 1998. Well, I tell you what, if I'm responsible for it and, and the fans are coming out to watch it, I'm sure proud to be responsible for the, the game of baseball getting back on its feet because... Uh, I tell you what, I am damn proud of what what I've what I've accomplished, what I had to go through, and especially the support I've been getting here in St. Louis is absolutely absolutely incredible. And I and I thank St. Louis for everything. Well, on behalf of St. Louis, on behalf of the baseball world, the sports world, and right now pretty much the country, I want to say thank you, Mark McGuire, and congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Nice That's Mark so McGuire, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mark. This has been a, a magical night. At toward the end of a magical season. If you were to construct a home run hitter in a lab, put him together, he'd look like that. 
and he'd be that kind of person. He is genuinely someone that we can all look up to and realize that greatness is in our midst. This man tonight hit home run number 62 in the Cardinals 145th game of the year. He is now the new single season home run champion. He has 62 and counting and the question now how many before the end of 1998 tonight's swing is worth another look. Ball carries to the track, might leave the park. He did it! A grand slam, and it's four to nothing. McGuire with number one. Hey, there it is! Look at this baby into the upper deck, off the facade up there. Number 17. What any doubt about this one going to the yellow line? Woo! Runner goes and a long run on that tail. Number 21. And the Cardinals take a the thing. has been a presentation of Fox Sports, where legends are made, where champions are crowned, where dreams come true. Fox Sports, home of the 1998 World Series.